Hello everybody. We all we all here. I'm just gonna can you um hear me people let me just check that everybody can hear me. Um sorry we're a bit late. Um, yeah, we're just a bit late, and I just want to know if people can hear me. Don't mind that noise. Am I being heard? Yes, it looks like I am. I think I am. Um, right. Possible questions such as how did they organize their armies? When did they reach? Okay. Okay, everyone. Um, we're gonna get cracking. I don't know how many people are with us today, but this is a continuation of uh, something that started uh, on Friday. Things were really topsy-turvy my internet was up and down um today it's not it's holding up very well um thank you jed kane our moderators in the house and um yeah so we started this on friday and things kind of went all right because of the internet connection that's sorted as i said now we should be good i actually found out today that <laughs> the reason the main reason for my problems is actually the software i'm using to stream so fancy that this is the very thing i'm using to stream um causes my internet well just to slow down as soon as i well at least on my laptop anyway so my internet's actually okay but on my laptop as soon as i load um this software i'm using to stream um it just my tabs start to slow up switching between tabs start to start to slow down um, videos, you know, take ages to load. So happily, luckily, I have Ro, uh, Jeshit, Jesh Jeshit. Am I saying that properly? Afro Jeshit. My German isn't very good. I can just about, I can just about um, bluff like French and maybe Spanish uh, sort of accents and pronunciations of things. But German, I've always hated German. I had this, I put that down to, it sounds German anyway, afro Geschicht sounds German. But I put the fact that I hate German down to my um, German teacher in primary school. She was absolutely awful. Typical, stereotypical German woman as well. All she needed was um, the, the string of sausages with her. Big old lady, sit with her bare feet on the, um, on the um, table. Teaching us German. Guten Tag. <laughs> I never forget it. I didn't like that woman. Mrs. Lola. Anyway, um, I'm guessing that's German. I hope I've pronounced it properly. I probably haven't. But glad to have you here, Afro Jeskit. Very good to have you. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Okay, right. Um, so, what we're going to do, we're going to launch into things straight away. Before I start, I want to say, we got a website. Um, let me see if it's. Mm, let's actually see if it's still operational. <laughs> um, it should be, but knowing my luck recently, um, you don't know. Unlike Metatron, who has a team, if you've seen his latest video on the whole black controversy thing, um, we don't have. A team we just have ourselves so I just have myself and that's that so here we go here's our website anytime you know you're feeling our stuff anytime you got I don't really like to push it as much on the on the um, YouTube channel um, I figure if people if people want to they'll support us in you know this way so but really I, I, let me tell you something guys if you really want to support the movement in a meaningful way is to wear is to wear this stuff with pride and 
I looked around before starting before starting the website for starting our merch side of things and I didn't want anything corny. You guys can tell me. I might that might I might be being I I might be accidentally ironic, be ironic by saying that. I don't know what you guys think of what's what's um what's what you can see here, but you know, we try to make it not corny, stylish, things that you know you'd be actually proud. I've got a few guys who are wearing what you can see here on the um, bottom left, uh, bottom right hand corner, um, and they love it. Um, Kwame and Krumer up here, absolutely love that t shirt, it's my favorite. Um, so, anyway, I don't want to plug too much, but where the culture, guys, YouTube, little known secret, YouTube takes so if when you, when you drop us a super chat we love that but youtube takes a cut and you know it is what it is but this way you can support us and youtube wouldn't take a cut and it will go towards helping me you know helping us create our own team you know metatron likes to talk about his team his team of researchers i don't know don't know who's on his payroll but it'd be nice to have a team here as well you know so help us out when you can if you can by checking out our content, um, our, our merchandise on our um, on our website. And what I'm looking to do in the future with the website is have it be a place where we can have articles, um, more academic stuff. Um, just, um, yeah, just, I'm even thinking of putting my scripts for my videos on cut. All the stuff that gets cut out will be in there. And the only place you can get it is by going to website. So anyway, it will just maybe help out to divert traffic onto website. And because I'm trying to build the website up, trying to make it a, a big place. We can't depend on YouTube all the time. We can't depend on YouTube forever um, because, you know, <laughs> things that are controversial. YouTube is, is not our home. You know, it's not, we can't just say what we like. You know, there's, there's a few videos of mine got demonetized because of some little just minor infractions just nothing really um but um it is what it is but youtube isn't really where we we don't want to be dependent too much on youtube it's a great platform great platform i could even get demonetized in this video for saying that so you know but anyway it's a great platform um if if the bots are listening to me if the ai is is listening to me or any youtube moderators are listening to me, it's a great platform not knocking it brilliant for coverage and getting your stuff out there but it's still limited so get on our website and check us out on our website and, and check our merchandise out on our website as well right we're gonna go straight into it thank you jed kane loving the sankara um he says that's brilliant thank you um yeah i hope that sankara gets some love as well some more love all right let's go into this video and we stopped really at um this dude right here regaling us, giving us his um, take on the skin tones um, that the Egyptians use in their wall art and their wall reliefs. And with all his, um, <laughs> with all his, with all his um, talk of uh, academic research in the response video to Metatron, um, he just makes a bunch of suppositions, a bunch of assertions about why the Egyptians use brown skin tone, um, which he calls brown red, I think. I think most people see it as red. But when you see it properly, it's not... The Egyptians aren't trying to portray red people. They're trying to portray deep, dark, brown Africans. You know? Just brown Africans. I'm, I'm a West African myself, and we, whenever we depict ourselves in, in, in artwork, in coloured artwork... We don't paint ourselves pitch black. We don't paint ourselves. We paint ourselves a brown, a shade of brown, you know. And I don't understand why the ancient Egyptians wouldn't do that either. They just so happen to live also in the continent of Africa. The ancient Egyptians happen to live on the continent on the continent of Africa. And on the continent of Africa, you have massive genetic variation, and you also happen to have the darkest people known to humankind living on the continent of Africa as well. Pitch black people. I said this on Friday. The, the actual 
Uh, the darkest person, I think she might be in the Guinness Book of Records, the darkest person living on Earth right now, probably, maybe recorded. Um, let's, let's, oh, I don't really want to crash my very delicate stream. But let's go looking for her. Um, uh, let's go Google and let's look for darkest woman on Earth. She is, I think she's, um, let's have a look. I think she's Sudanese, sovereign Sudanese. Oh, well, there's this lady. I think it was um, Inyakim, Inyakim, um, what's her name here? Inyakim Gatwek, the lady who has got the darkest skin in the world, if you can see that on screen. Um and then there's this lady, this Senegalese model. Um, but this um, lady, Nyakim Gatum, she seems, Gatwick, she seems to be what is, and in some videos, I mean, she's wearing makeup there that's kind of bronzed her up a little bit. But um, in other um, depictions of her, you can see that she's quite dark. It, not depictions, other photographs of her. She's just pitch black. That's Africa. Now, is she representative of black Africans? No, <laughs> absolutely not. You know, she's one of many. Uh, yeah, yeah, RJ McKenzie, in, in Metatron's head, that's a, this is a black person. And he tries to he, he tries to reverse things. He tries to say, oh, um, uh, in, in his response to Kualimika, oh, I don't really mean that that was a black no but we heard you we actually heard you we're gonna we're gonna get into his his, his initial video now where ancient egyptians black the truth and let's just get straight into that so that um to the bronze age how did they tackle commerce what was their religion like in a myriad more all of these questions matter because they help us better understand a people right. their civilization you their story you However, the ancient Egyptians did acknowledge and recognize the physical differences between them we use to identify people and how we use them. Uh, even in my case, I have recently where... immigrated into the United States of America. And when... There we go. That's what we want. Right about... A separate ethnicity or as it did happen black depending on as you pose on your just a quick question can you hit one if you can hear what my desktop is playing if you can hear what's on screen just hit one for me thank you i just need to know that people can hear that kinto maybe i don't know these classifications are indeed fluid but i think we you guys hear that i'm just gonna press play now all know what we mean when we say black like this guy. Here is what... Okay, so I think we all know what we mean when we say black. He's pointed to um, Mayesha Ali there. I think that's his name. The Egyptians said, look at this image. Thank to you, the Jake right, Mando. you see how the Egyptians represented themselves. The black gentleman is representing a Nubian, basically a member of the very prominent and very powerful and advanced kingdom of Kush, which was south of Egypt. And those are representing... Right, again, let's just stop right here. Metatron says, I, I, I tried to explain this yesterday, but I didn't, I kind of, I wasn't satisfied with how well I explained it. Metatron claims that the Egyptians are trying to dis, uh, depict an olive skinned people um, to the far right. The Libyans, let me just get this off the screen. Nope, I want it back up. Really? Right. Right, so Metatron claims this gentleman on the far right is what you might call um, Olive, and he's just tanned. Okay, cool. Let's 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 see how that holds up. Um, I don't think so. This gentleman on the far left is Libyan. Now, if as he goes on to conclude, the Egyptians are depicting themselves as Olive people with a tan. In all their representations of themselves with deep, dark... In f this reproduction itself is dishonest. Because when you look actually at the wall paintings, the wall, the tomb paintings, you see that this brown is nowhere near as brown as it needs to be. You need light to actually even lighten it up to this level. 
It's a deep brown. It's the kind of brown you would use for a people who were African. I mean, if, if you're olive and you're getting tanned to the level that you see on these tomb paintings, you've got a problem. You've got a problem. You probably need to spend less time in the sun. And I, I don't know if there'd be any Egyptians like left to build the pyramids if they were all getting that sunburnt. Heat stroke would be a thing. So, and I also don't understand why the Egyptians, who are right next door to the Libyans, okay, who, who themselves are, you know, this this species of Libyan that you see on the left isn't typical of, because Herodotus tells us that there were another set of Libyans, there were lighter skinned Libyans, such as these ones. Uh, he calls a lot of Libyan population, he calls a lot of them immigrants. He calls them newcomers. I would, su I would suggest that, we're talking about this lot on the, I would suggest that refers to this type on the far left. Okay. But that's not, we're not, we're not going to die on that hill. That's not what we're, that's not what we're talking about tonight. What we are saying is the Libyans are on the same hemisphere as the Egyptians. Wouldn't they have the same tan? Wouldn't they have the same level of tan? If really the, the Egyptians were saying, guys, this is just a tan. Then you'd paint the, the Libyans, the Asiatics. We're looking at Turks, Babylonians, Persians here. When we look at the Asiatics, I mean, <laughs> Metatron expects us to believe that the Egyptians are so much tanner than people on the same hemisphere, the same, um, I don't know what tropic it is, Tropic of Capricorn or whatever, the same elevation, this, the same, for to all intents and purposes, climate. Metatron expects us to believe that they can be pale white like this, which is what I think he means when he says olive. This is what you would call olive, really. Um, but they're on the same hemisphere, but no, they're not as tanned. We, we're the only ones on the same hemisphere, the same sort of Middle Eastern Levantine people, right? Which is what they like to tell us. We're just, we're, we just really get it bad with the sun. What? What? I don't... <laughs> What? Does that even make any sense? No. I, I tell you what, I was reading an article today. It's an old article. And I'm, I'm, I might make a video just on this article. It is brilliant. It's by a guy called Frank Martin um, from the University of Milwaukee, wing, uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, um, over there in America. And he, he, he encapsulates this Egypt controversy in the best way I've I've seen probably ever. He calls it, I think he calls it something like a psychosis in the white mind. If there are any white people listening, just, it's not, it's a, it's a gross generalization. He's not coming for every white person. Um, because again, like I've said this before, a lot of what we know, a lot of the truths that have come out about ancient Egypt is thanks to white people being honest. So there's a, there's a, there's, we can't, paint with a broad brush you have to come out with a lot of white researchers could have sat on themselves but they chose not to and we use a lot of their studies today in advancing um you know this truth so we can't paint with a broad brush here but this guy in his article frank martin he says it's like this ancient egypt controversy is can only be explained by and, you know, by, by, by looking at the white man and seeing that after centuries of dominating black people, it's quite hard, even in academia, even amongst white academia, it's quite hard to turn around and say, sugar, oh my goodness, we mess things up so badly. We, tr we, we, o we obviously knew whilst we were engaging in this transatlantic slave trade thing that these guys were human beings like us the same level of capability, but we're just going to keep on doing it anyway. So now when you get to the stage where we're discovering that ancient Egypt was, you know, a Negro civilization, it's too much to, to deal with, to have to come out and say, oh my goodness, the people who we've done all this to and lied so much about for centuries gave us everything. Well, in some circles, we say gave, you know, the theory is that Egypt gave the world everything, but I, I firmly believe that, you know, a lot of um, even writing goes back to the Egyptian slash Nubian people, the, 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 um, 
the people along the Nile. Imagine that. That's what's going on. That's really what's going on. It's hard to admit that, oh my goodness. So there's a problem. There's a sort of schizophrenia in the quote-unquote white mind. To have to have to actually have to admit, oh my gosh, we made a mistake. Okay, so I'll play this. I'll, I'll carry on playing this. Patients of an Asiatic and a Libyan. Of course, it's important to take into consideration the cultural and commercial and religious exchanges that happened between the kingdom of Kush and Egypt. Of course, a certain percentage of Nubians, which will differ depending on which area of Egypt we are talking about, will have lived among the Egyptians. But the Egyptians do represent themselves with this image. Stop. Yeah. This image, <laughs> these are Africans you're looking at. <laughs> Who paints themselves? Who is so obsessed with their tan? <laughs> what group of people are so obsessed with their tan that every time they paint themselves, I got to paint. I got to paint that tan on. I've got to paint that tan. <laughs> I've got. <laughs> I don't even know if um, the Kardashians are like that obsessed. I don't know who is it. Who loves to um blackfish today in celebrity culture? Give me uh, I don't know chat. You guys you guys might be um more um au fait with like you know pop culture. I don't know who my audience is, but who is it in pop culture today who we can say is obsessed with their tan so much that <laughs> they go around and do you know what? Uh, Metatron's cognitive and the, these Eurocentrics. Thank you, Mej. Um, thank you exactly. Eurocentrics. Uh, and with color and art, we enter a whole new range of topics that I'd like to hopefully simplify for this video. How did the Egyptians use and create color and why do Egyptian women... Stop. Right there. <laughs> right there is showing you black people. Um, I'm going to explain to you what's going on with the slightly lighter skinned women... Um, that you tend to see on Egyptian frescoes, Egyptian walls. I'm going to explain to you, in my opinion, nobody knows in terms of nobody has an Egyptian papyrus somewhere saying, oh, uh, sometimes when you see the woman a bit lighter than the men, it's because we're doing this or we're trying to say this and that, blah, blah, blah. You know, you have to kind of use everybody, even those with a PhD in Egyptology, are peace. Let me take you to I, I, what I did was I made sure that I didn't, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to depend on the internet, so I made sure I downloaded everything I needed. Right, so let's go to um, um, some of these, some of the pictures that you're going to see. Um, let me just... Right, oh, let's go there. Metatron says that this deep brown that you're seeing on your screens is best represented by an olive skin type on the continent of Africa now. We're on the continent of Africa. He skips a whole continent, landmass. You don't have to cross the sea. You don't have to cross the oceans to look for a skin type. And they all do this. The Egyptologists do this today. They skip a whole continent to go looking for a skin type that represents what you see on the on the walls of what the Egyptians uh, the, the, um, on the Egyptian walls, and then when they find those people, they say, "Well, they're not exactly like that as you see on the walls because it's a tan they're trying to show. They're trying to show a tan." Okay, here's the psychosis we're talking about. Let's let's have a look at this. So let's let's see how bad the psychosis is because you don't need to go anywhere. To find people who match that skin tone on the same landmass, in the same continent, and with the same phenotypes. Curly, kinky locks, still practicing the same hair techniques that leaves their kinky hair texture in that flowy, downy, ringlety texture that you see on the Egyptian walls. Till today, you have the Afar, the Oromo, the Tigray, all of them, you can see them till today. In along that stretch, that eastern stretch, that northeastern stretch, down south, down to the Horn of Africa, down into Sudan, down into the, the edges of before you go into southern Sudan, you still have these people that look skin tone, skin complexion, hair type, look 
like the black Africans that you see on these wall reliefs. You don't have to go out of Africa. You don't have to skip. You don't have to go out over the Mediterranean. You don't have to go to Turkey. No, it's stupid. Because here, let, let me let me put this back on screen. Um, right. Um, what's going on now? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. RJ McKenzie, they are in they are intentionally avoiding Africa. And it's sad because we're we're in 2020. We're in like Trump spray tan, yeah. Exactly. RJ McKenzie, thank you for that. Yeah, exactly, like a Trump spray tan. It's it's ridiculous, okay? But we have actual people with PhDs that spout this, that say this. Zahi Hawass, however you say his name, Zahi Hawass, the guy in Egypt who's recently retired, who was the head of all of it, you know, antiquities in Egypt, he believes this rubbish. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a group of um, images of Africans who readily fit this brown, deep brown texture that you see on Egyptian walls. Right, let's go back. Let me share my screen again. There you have, uh, I believe, an Afar girl. Look, you can see her hair. They still braid their hair like this. This is how we Africans, African women, till today, everywhere you find them, you find them in Af in. in America there, you find them in Nigeria, you find them in Ghana, we like to braid our hair down. We braid it in ringlets, in tight, fine ringlets, and um, I don't, I, I, you can tell I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to hairdressing. You know, shoot me, I'm a, black, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy, you know what I'm saying? Um, but um, everyone out there knows what I'm talking about. We like to braid our hair. It, exactly the same way that you see the Oromo people, the Afar people still do today. Okay, let's go to the next picture. Look at this woman. Is she, would you call her as black as night? Would you need to, how, would you, how else would you represent this woman if you, if you weren't a pure racist and you weren't trying to take the proverbial mick? Uh, okay. Press one if you can hear me. My stream cut out. Unbelievable. I, I'm telling you now, Metatron's up to no good. It's it's um I think it was suggested yesterday. This is on all day long. My internet has been on point. He looks like a um a little tech whiz, a little basement dweller, tech whiz guy, sort of guy. Um Okay, Gabriel Oni Oni Budo. Um, are you? Can you hear my? Can you hear the audio now? Is it? Am I back? Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. That was my internet. That was my internet. Right. So you got this lady here. Um, you got this lady here, and she is just um. Don't mind me, guys. I'm just topping myself up with um little bit of um fire water here i need it to get through this i tell you, i i needed <laughs> i i needed a shot of something to get through video after video of watching this guy's face talk a bunch of rubbish and i i i i'm so proud of myself i didn't do it i just i just watched i got through it without anything and now that i'm actually here presenting this to you guys i feel like liberty i feel like i deserve it right Okay, let's go. Let's keep going. Right. We got this woman. Next. These are Afar women in native wear. Afar women in native wear. Um, they're just doing their thing. I don't know what that... Yeah, those are daggers. Shape a bit like boomerangs there. Um, would these people paint themselves jet black? Would, would I mean, it's Met... Are you telling me that this... I hate calling him Metatron. It's a stupid name. We'll call him Worm Tongue. You, can, you guys can look that up. Grimo Worm Tongue. It's from Lord of the Rings. He looks just like that guy. Let's call him Worm Tongue. 
So if you're just joining us, we're calling Metatron Worm Tongue from now on. You can look up who that is. One of the best films ever made. He's in that. Right. Um, so Worm Tongue expects us to believe that in order to depict uh, the brown skin tone of the Egyptians, due to that, we have to go out of Africa, if we're going to reconstruct it, go to the Levant and bring people in who would first have to tan and then say, ah, see, the Egyptians were depicting themselves tanned, as tanned people, rather than stay on the continent of Africa and have a look at people who still look like that, who are naturally, whether they're out in the sun for however long or not, have this brown hue, this brown hue of melanin. Okay? Black and beautiful is right. Thank you, RJ McKenzie. Right, let's go on. These are the Khoisan people now. You're looking at the Khoisan people. You've got them. I think there have been studies, genetic studies shown um, that the, the Egyptians are related to the, the ancient Egyptians are related to the Khoisan group as well. We've got those studies out there. I've not got them ready for you right now, but we've got them ready. What, what's that? Medjay Commander says no. No to what? Let me know what you're talking about. Oh, maybe I, I asked a question earlier. Thank you. If, if that's what you're referring to, then thank you for, thank you for that engagement. Okay. We got more Oromo girls, you know, um, just, you know, again, even looking at them, you can see the hair texture that you see on the walls constantly that whenever they are, <laughs> whenever they're trying to say to us, uh, look at this white woman in a wig, in a wig with bangs. Um, that's the ancient Egyptians. Whenever they show us that, they're skipping all of this. They're skipping all of this. You know? Okay, let's go. More of them. Oromo girls. I had to be careful download, um, titling these when I downloaded the images. You know, girls, Oromo girls. But, you know, it sounded, it sounded a, bit, a bit off. So, I don't know. I had to, had to make sure my missus knew that. Look, I, I wasn't doing anything funny. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure she trusts me anyway, but, you know. Um, Oromo girls. Here's an Oromo man from Ethiopia in his native thing there. African. Tr through and through. I've had people come in the comments on our videos, see people like this and say, yeah, but they're not black. They say that as well. This is the psychosis we're talking about. Yeah, but they're not black. Oh, but you sure treated them like they were for hundreds of years when you were taking over their country, looting them, writing about them as Negroid and all of this. <laughs> you sure did. And, but now they're not black all of a sudden. Now it's like I had one guy. I had one guy in the comments of um, of my last video, uh, the um, white devils question mark. He came around. And he said, "Oh yes, well Queen Charlotte isn't technically black because the you know there's the one drop rule, but that you know if you're being realistic, that doesn't make you black. You know, yeah. But again, who made up the one drop rule? We didn't." You know, we were happy looking for, like, looking at someone like Queen Charlotte, thinking, yeah, she's, to all intents and purposes, that's a white woman. But you, in your racial stratification that you used to divide and conquer, that you used to allay your consciences, you made up, your culture made up the one-drop rule. And now you want to turn around and say to us, yeah, but, 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 yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, what? Yeah, but what? This is the double standard. This is the psychosis that you are constantly having to deal with when it comes to ancient Egypt, when it comes to anything African history. It's a psychosis. I'm going to read you the article um, at some point tonight, and um, and I'm going to I'm going to read you the article, and it and it very articulately um, spells out this psychosis that we're dealing with when it comes to black history when it comes to t discussing black history with um people with an agenda people with a racist agenda and sadly this has wormed its way it's not just like it's not really a white and black thing arabs are you know the what you would call the present population of egypt have a deeply embedded racist attitude in their society um an antipathy towards black africa uh, even black Africans have it. 
even even we as a people have it. I grew up not thinking twice about this idea that the Egyptians were Middle Eastern type in in look and I I didn't I didn't question it till much later. I started to think. I think it started when I was at university. I remember. I, I'll tell you a quick story. I'm digressing here. Okay, Lola, let me let me quickly look at the chat. Um, what's this now? Uh, we've got. Let me let me give a shout out to. Her. Oh my goodness, we got the debunker in the chat. We have the debunker in the building. I can't believe it. Finally, I'm. Oh my! Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Look, look. I, I'm not trying to um, not trying to idolize anybody here. But I owe a big debt of gratitude to people like the debunker, who's be, I first came across him and his work on Quelimika's channel, his greatest fantastic channel, and the debunker um, has been helpful to to Quelimika in sourcing things for him, and he's also been helpful to my channel in sourcing things uh, for me. I love the fact that he doesn't, he's just all about getting information out there, and. Completely anonymous. I don't know who he is. I actually don't know who he is. I've never met him. I don't. I don't have an idea what he looks like or she looks like. But I just know they're up for the fight, you know. And um, they're they you know, <laughs> big props to you, Debunker. Thank you so much uh, for joining this chat. It's 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 really. I'm really um, I'm 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 honoured. I just say I'm honoured. Oh, everyone else, um, you're just. Let me just say now, you are just as important as the Debunker. <laughs> But I just gotta give a big shout out to the Bonke. He's, he's been a great help. Thank you so much, man. So let, let's ju- let's just get back into this. Um, forgive my rudeness, Meje Commander. Forgive my rudeness. What's up to the chat is 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 right. Okay, right. Um, let's keep going. We have got to nail this because according to to according to these racists, I'm gonna just gonna call them what they are, racists. You have to go out of Africa to find the best approximation to the deep brown color that you see on these walls. These are more Oromo men. I don't see no, I don't see any gaudy wog looking, stupid, um, racist, satirical presentations of black people when I look at these people. I see black people of brown to dark brown to black. You could say one guy in the front here is virgin on black. But again, it's deep, dark brown. Thank you, Negative Skull. Thank you. Negative Skull says, what I am referring to when I mention the Khoisan relation with the Egyptians is the genetic study by Krubetsi, who, Krubetsi, who genetically tested modern southern Egyptians from Adaima, and they had a maternal haplogroup that speaks in modern Khoisan, um, that peaks in modern Khoisan groups. Okay, okay, this is a smaller picture. Uh, I didn't really intend, I didn't, when I downloaded this image, I didn't really want it to be um, this small. You've got these women um, from, who are Oromo women. You've got these women who are Oromo women, and they are, again, <laughs> you don't have to go out of Africa. you got people. How else were all the Egyptians painting these people if not? And do you know what? I'm just going to say this right now. Well, let's just go through these images. Just let me let me go through these images quickly. Uh, okay, you've got more there, more Roma women. You've got... I'm going to show you the sand people, Koi sand people. There's a guy on YouTube. I don't want to I don't want to give him any any um, shine. There's a there's a there's a white old man on YouTube. It's li- I'm not being racist. That's literally what he is. He's, he's an old white man on YouTube and he's channel is dedicated to quote-unquote debunking you know false history it just so happens that that false history is always debunking happens to be let me just get this back on screen okay it just so happens that whenever this dude of a youtube channel is debunking false history it's always black history He's never found an accurate moment in black history that gives black the black ethnicity any shine. He's always coming to say, oh, you know that person that supposedly invented this and that, and you know this civilization that was supposedly founded by blacks, and you know it's all lies, you know? 
He actually has a video on there. <laughs> right. Thank you, Mejay. Mejay Commander knows what I'm talking about. He has a video who... Uh, he has a video on his channel claiming that the Khoisan people aren't blacks. He says... Now, this guy doesn't even go... This guy doesn't... He comes... He goes for all the marbles. This disgusting... Do you know, I went to church today and I made a promise. I made a promise to the Lord that I would be... I would not be quarrelsome. Yeah, that, I think that was the passage. I wouldn't be quarrelsome. I, I would be calm and, you know, giving. So I'm not going to call him disgusting. I was going to say disgusting prune. But no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. That's quarrelsome. Okay. This guy says that the Khoisan people, he goes for all the marbles. If you were going to detract, you might even say they're Asian. Asiatic. i got to stop between Asian and Asiatic there. They're Asian. This guy says they're white. He says, actually, if you look at them properly, they're white. I couldn't believe it. I said... <laughs> I thought that I thought it was a troll I, when I saw the thumbnail. I think it was uh oh, what's her name? This she's brilliant. Envita, Envy Anita, I can't remember her. But um he he's oh my goodness, we got a super chat. We have a super chat. Um is that my first super uh, super chat? I I need I need bells and whistles guys. I need I need um what do you call it? I need jingles. Because if we had a jingle, let, let me let me get my one of my kids. There we go. Let me see if we can hear this. Let's have a look. No, don't want that. No, shut up. D listen. That's not the jingle. That's not the jingle I was looking for. But you get my drift. Oh my! If I if I had one of those Jamaican claxons, do, 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 do. thank you so much, Black Rampage. I'm absolutely I'm over the moon. Not really. It's not. I can't believe that someone actually likes what's going on on the channel so much that they they they're giving us a super chat. I think that's my first super chat, and I am so um I'm just grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. New to the channel, great work from across the pond, says Black Rampage 2. Thank you so much, man. All right, so this guy claims that the Khoisan people are white people. Let's move on. Obviously stupid, but he's got lots of people who actually watch his stuff and think, yes, 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 of course, yes, they're whites, yeah. Yes, Negroes stealing people's histories. Any other day, any other day, the Khoisans are savages, savage black Africans. But because it fits your dial, your paradigm of black people never achieved anything, they're this and they're that, all of a sudden the Khoisan people aren't black. They're whites, don't you know? This is the psychosis. You know what? I, when I started Troll Black, I used to get really wound up. I used to get really frustrated with the detractors in the comments. I don't anymore because I realize, I, I see it for what it is, a psychosis, an absolute psychosis. So I just, you know what, say what you want, do what you want. The only time I would delete a comment now is if it's outright just inciting, if it's just saying something ridiculous, oh, you're all monkeys or something like that, you know, that kind of stuff. It's just, I, I can handle it, I laugh at it, but... I don't want the channel to become that kind of a space, so I delete it. Oh, welcome back. The Cushy, the Cushy, thank you. I have for a long time, says the Cushy, thought that the use of the yellow color used on some of their images was a homage to the Khoisan people who were instrumental in forming the culture. That could be an explanation. I have my own explanation. I'll give you that in a second. That could be an explanation. But they were certainly part of it. I believe the Khoisan people were certainly part of uh, or people that look like what you would call Khoisan today, because all of that place, we spread out. I believe that the spreading out of the black race into South and East is relatively more recent than we think. It's not as, um, it's not as far back. 
Um, I think people spread out much more recently than we think, at least into Africa. Again, why in the case of Africa? Because Africa is a massive continent. Absolutely massive. These guys were writing home about crossing the length of Africa when they did it in the in the Victorian times. You know, because it's abs- something that you could only do... Anyway, I, I, that's, I'm digressing massively. I'm digressing massively. Right, you got Tigray people. Tigray boys. Tigra, uh, Tigray and girl. Tigray and girl. Ethiopians. Tigrayans. Again, I don't know how else you would depict these people on walls if not with the brown color that we're talking about. That Metatron says is olive. Someone made a point recently. Olives are actually black. You get black olives. So, <laughs> so ironic. Um, he's kind of shot himself in the foot with that. Okay, let's keep going. We've got more Afar men. And you've got these people still with the same hairstyles. Okay, let's go on to that point. If you look at these people, and if you look at the wall arts that we regularly see, right, let me, let me get that up for you on the screen. Let me get that up for you guys on the screen. I'm just going to go to... Uh, what is it now? There we go. Okay. Let's go out of this. Right. We're going to look at some wall art of Egyptians. And we're going to compare it to... Now, not looking at this skin tone that Metatron wants to claim is olive, let's look at finer details. Let's look at the hair structure. Let's look at, uh, let's let's look at their hair. Let's just look at their hair, their lips, their noses, and I've got. Let's have a quick look. Right. Let's zoom in. Close that down. We have that up there. Right, we've got... This is apparently... To, um, this wall um, painting is the servant in the place of truth. In the, it's supposedly um, from the Valley of the Kings. And it's uh, of Senegem and his wife. Um, what does it say up here? Yeah, Senegem and his wife. Look at these people. I'm zooming in there. Look at the hair texture. Look at the hair texture. This is kinky African hair done, massaged or treated to flow downwards. Look at them. Just, <laughs> I'm speechless because the fact that we even have to do this the fact that we even have to do the fact I was I've been going through this research all day and just been thinking to myself this on one hand it's like oh yeah I'm I'm I'm, I'm so happy I'm so enthused that I'm finally going to get on on a live and I'm going to break down but on the other hand like two thirds of me is saying this is so depressing that I even have to do this that you, we even have to wrestle we have to fight for like what's playing. Okay, let's keep going. You can see there quite clearly that's a black person. Look at their hair, look at the hair texture. Okay. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go to the next image. Right, here we go again. More black Africans with their hair Two black African men in Egypt, ancient Egyptians, with their hair in the form that you would you see amongst many of the Oromo, the Afar people um, today in along that stretch of Eastern Africa. Okay, simple, not not nothing, and I'll prove this to you in a minute. We'll do a side by side comparison. Again, you got more Africans rocking their locks. Mackenzie says rocking the locks in Jamaica. In the 30s, 
folks would think he could it would be Rasta. Yeah, exactly. People would think these guys are Rastas. Rastas with a slight perm. I don't know if Rastas perm. I don't maybe they don't. I don't know about that. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. How else are you describing you this this hairstyle when you see it in movies, they, they make them wigs. That's another part of the psychosis. The Egyptians, none of them ever had their real hair. None of them ever had their real hair on. They were all wearing wigs. Like, what? <laughs> I think they found one or two wigs, one wig in a tomb, and that was it. That gave them the excuse they needed forever and a day to say, oh, it's all wigs, it's a wig. Why do they need to call it a wig? Why? Because if you look at the hair and you, and you see it for what it is, it's black people. It's black people hair. <laughs> it's black folk hair. You know? And in any case, why are people, why are the Egyptians rocking wigs that look more like their southern neighbours than, I don't know, their, their supposed Levantine um, relatives, their cousins in, in the Levant? Because when you go to the Levant, what you see are um, straight, straight hair, straight beards, Stylized into into curls sometimes amongst the Babylonians and the Persians, but straight hair. Also, note another part that often goes unmentioned, and I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go there for you, all right, because this is important. They're very hairless. I think I said this on Friday. They are very hairless. That's another genetic. Uh, if you're black, I, I'm I'm actually for a black guy. I'm a hairy person. I can. I'm one of the. My, I'm one of the fewest amongst my friends, amongst the people I know, who can grow a full beard. And it took me a while. You know, I, I know lots and lots of black folks. I grew up with black folks. I am black myself. And it's a very, we're a very, like, not, I don't know what the word would be, in her suit, people. We, we, we find we're challenged in terms of growing facial hair. You know, we got, we're blessed with hair on top. That's, you know, we're blessed with, you know, genes to grow things like afros and whatnot. But we don't tend to have hair on our faces. And that's what you see on the wall art. We can, however, we have just enough of the gene that produces facial hair that we can rock a goatee. We can rock a goatee. I've got lots of black friends who can't grow a full beard, but they've got just about enough of that gene, of whatever gene it is that um, uh, produces facial hair. they got just enough of that gene to grow a goatee. That's what you see in Egypt. That's what you see in ancient Egypt. you got people styling the, what little facial hair they have into a goatee. I've got, I've got friends like that on and on who can rock a goatee. Who can, but they go to a barber's, what are you doing? The guy's not doing anything with his beard, you know. He's just, he's just rocking, he's just shaping his, his, his facial hair into a goatee. Again, that's what you see in Egypt. Often goes unspoken, often goes untalked about. But again, I believe that's why you see so many Egyptians rocking goatees in the art. Okay, let's go on. Right, you see this hair that you're seeing right now in the statue? Um, it's a poor quality image. This is what the ancient Greeks go on to depict. Let me show you. I talked about this in a video. Right, here's another guy. This is a statue. Metatron's going to tell you not to look. No, oh, I can't. I can't. I really can't zoom in here. Can I zoom in? No, this picture won't let me zoom in. Uh, you are going to have to um, kind of draw yourself close to the um, to the screen, guys. This image, there's no denying what you're seeing there. But let Metatron tell the story. This is an olive man with thick lips, with thick. Thick ass lips. This is this is some this is some olive guy right here. This is some olive. <laughs> look at his lips. Look at his nose. Look at the um the almond shape of his eyes, which is something that <laughs> again the Khoisans have to an extremity, but is an African trait. Um, look at his locks. Look at his locks. You know when they try to show us those wigs on the on the on the actors and the actresses in the movies. This is what they're depicting when they show white actresses and black, um, sorry, white, white actors and actresses in bangs, in these black straight bangs. They're they <laughs> and we buy it. We buy it. 
We buy it. Like, look at this guy. And when you come to the time when the Greeks are ruling Egypt, they can't help depicting it in the way they depict that in the way they do their art. Greeks came along with this very uber realistic depictions. Uh, which I, I actually love. I really, I really like. Um, gives, you know, God gives some shine to the, the to the Greeks out there. But when they do their statues, and when they when they're depicting the ancient Egyptians as they see them when they're in Egypt, this is what this is this. I think this is a statue from Alexandria. Alexandria, that's the delta. That's as far north as you can go in Egypt. And at, in that time, uh, sorry, in that time, yeah, in that time and space, you got a time of like. Christ is just about to, you know, uh, BC era is just about to go and we're about to enter the AD era. You know, you are, you having ancient um, Greeks depict the Africans that they see as far north in Egypt, indigenous Africans with this phenotype, with this actual facial structure and hair structure. This is the hair that you see again and again in Egypt, that the Egyptians depict themselves in a stylized fashion. You know, and that's what this stylized fashion. Okay, there you go. This stylized fashion is what then, <laughs> what you see the movies depict as wigs, like with no, like just white wigs, Hel hel helmet wigs. But they know this. There's no way you got billions of dollars of bu of a of a movie budget, and you don't have, you've not done the research to see these kind of statues to think, oh my goodness. Right, I think these are black people, you know. I think we need some black actors for this. There's no way they don't know this. I'm here on my tinny laptop, my tinny streaming software, and I can find these images. So why are we being called Afro this and Afro that and Afrocentric for saying, look, we're not coming for Greece. I'm not coming for Greece, okay? I know, I know some people d d d differ. I believe Greece might have been far more multicultural than we think, that they will let us then they will acknowledge when we're still fighting for Egypt, they, they will definitely not acknowledge the multicultural, uh, the multicultural nature of Greece. But I don't think it was a, I, we can't say it was a black civilization. Fine. That's, that's, that's okay. But on the African continent, my people, my people, oh my goodness, this is, this is enough to make you cry. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on. Right. Again, see this. I don't know what's going on with this um this person here. Um I think it's an amaphrodite, you know. If you know what that is, you know, press press one in the chat. I think it's an amaphrodite. Here again, here again, you see you go close to the image, you see again what they would these are African locks. These are African treads. <laughs> This is African hair. You can see the nose on the person. You can see the broad nose. You can see the thick lips. There we go. Again, we got more. Metatron will tell you that what you are looking here is a man painted. Don't look at his hair. Don't watch his hair now. Ignore his hair. Ignore his nose. Ignore his lips. Ignore his eyes. This is this is Olive. This is Olive. All right. And here we have modern day people who live along that stretch. Who live along that same stretch, along the Nile. They've been pushed further south because of Arab conquest. We say Arabs, but I actually believe the original Arabs too, uh, the southern people on the southern Arabian uh, peninsula, uh, were black people. Again, look at that thin stretch called the Red Sea between Yemen and Ethiopia. They were black people. Uh, so I would say we're not even talking Arab. Arabs, when we talk about North Africa today, we're talking people whose whose origin goes back to the Ottoman Empire. And we're talking Turks. When we talk about the Ottoman Empire, we're talking Turkey. They they had a big they had a big run and their day was a long period. The Ottoman Empire's time and power and reign stretched far across North Africa into well into the P Middle East and even I think into parts of northern India. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure Northern India was affected. So, 
there's no surprise that that's where the lightness comes from in North Africa today. There's no surprise. Okay, let's keep going. There's a there's an Afar man there. So you've got people who are, who look like this, who still have the hairstyle that people were rocking 3,000, 2,000, 3,000, 3, 4,000 years ago. And no, don't look at that. Look at my olive. Look, look, look at my olives. <laughs> okay. I, do you know what? I, some of you might think this is overkill, but we need to overkill it. I want to overkill it in this live. I don't want to come back. I don't really want to touch on this for a long time because it's really annoying me. It's just annoying me. I'm annoyed because, because of people like Metatron, because of the lies... Um, I was robbed of, I was robbed, a lot of us have been robbed of pride, many a year, where we've just thought, like, okay, right, right, we couldn't cross the Sahara, okay, you're telling us, okay, we, I mean, we did have legs, but okay, you're saying we couldn't cross the Sahara, the only time we crossed the Sahara was because you made us slaves, and Oh, right, right. Okay, all right. Nothing, okay. You say you're a doctor. Right, okay, you must be true. Listen, the guy's a doctor. He's got a thesis in it and everything. Believe the man. And we were robbed, completely robbed of years and years of what would have been pride. Everyone's got pride in their thing. Everyone's got pride in their culture and what they achieved. No one's, no one's taking that away. But we're now being called thieves for waking up, picking up books, and thinking, and seeing some of this stuff ourselves, and saying, oh my goodness, we're being called thieves. Easy to debunk. Yes, Med J Commander, easy to debunk. But he's got like, he's almost got a million subscribers, and they all hang on his every word. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Right, so you're looking at this image right here. You zoom in on the hair texture again. Right, I'm just going to I'm going to go ahead and tell you now what I think is going on. Here's my theory on why you have women sometimes depicted um as light skin. Um lighter. You'll notice a pattern. And I've seen this live in the flesh. I've been to the British Museum and I've been to um uh an ex an exhibition in Manchester in the UK of Egyptian artifacts and Egyptian art. And I've seen them live in the flesh. And again, when you see them live in the flesh, it's even more obvious what you're looking at. It's more obvious. I couldn't help it. I was at the museum. I was I was talking out loud. I was like, these be... I'm not going to use the N-word. These be negritos. These are negros. I was saying out loud above. And people were walking past me like, oh my God. Like, oh my goodness. Uh, excuse me for the casual blasphemy there. Oh my goodness. Who is this? Who is this black dude? Like, oh my gosh, she's scary. No, I was just out there saying, these are Negroes. You know, <laughs> my wife was, my wife couldn't care either. She was like, baby, baby, get this one. Get this one on camera. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh my, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Okay, here's my theory. Um, When you see the women on their own, they have, when you see a wall of just women, you, you tend to just see a brown texture. The same brown texture that you see on the black, on, on, the, um, on the men. But when they're juxtaposed next to men, you have a downgrading. Now, I actually think they use the same level of, uh, sorry, the same uh, mixture, maybe, of... of um, paint okay but not the same levels so when you have the women next to men i think it's a sign of virility it's a way of distinguishing this is a male and this is a female the dark man you know as opposed to and you know do you know what we still have that we still have that in africa sadly it's a thing amongst women today that you know i grew up with um I grew up with women, I grew up with sisters, and 
they they had to go through their process of uh like awakeness as well of realization this is wrong but it's a thing that's like it's a fashion trend that's been around seems like for thousands of years now black women prefer lighter skin i don't know <laughs> i i think you can you can even see it like you you um you see it in the bible in the bible in the songs of solomon again i'll say this you guys who think the bible can't 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 instruct our 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 knowledge going forward you're doing yourself a disservice you're doing there's so much even if you don't believe in the god of the bible you're doing yourself a disservice to say oh that book's all rubbish and whatever there's some gems in that book there are some gems like in ezekiel 20 Four nineteen. I couldn't believe. I remember sitting uh, sitting down one day and saying, "If the Egyptians were black, there should be some clues in the Bible." Like half the Old Testament is about the Hebrews and their interaction with 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 um with the Egyptians. There should be some. Di- and short of them, short of the Bible saying yes, the Egyptians were black, you actually find indications in the Bible. There's a part in Ezekiel that says, and I did a video on it. I couldn't believe it when I found it. It said, I will return you. This is God speaking. I will return you to the land of your origin, to the land of your, some versions say habitation, but to the land of your origin. And where does it say? I couldn't believe what I saw. The, the next word I saw, because I use a King James version, is pathros. In the King James version, the old version, it says pathros. And that's from an old Egyptian word itself, patruzi. I, I did a video on this a long time ago, last year. But for people who haven't seen the video, that word is translated in modern translations as upper egypt god says i will return you i'm done with your pride egypt and i'm done with you not worshiping me because i'm the one true god etc etc but i'm not going to punish you by making you no more a world power i'm going to return you back and you're going to have no more of this world status that you've enjoyed for thousands of years you're going to go back and you're going to be a small people in upper egypt i couldn't believe it now, if, 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 as we're led to believe, the Egyptians are Levantine people, why doesn't the Bible say, I will return you to your land of origin in Babylon, or in the Levant, or in Alexandria, or in... <laughs> it says, literally, when does it in Upper Egypt? And what are we finding in the archaeological record today? After years and years of arguing back and forth, where finally the archaeological record, the scientific record, is showing that the Egyptians, as per the Nak- Nakada culture, as per pre-dynastic Egypt, as per early dynastic uh, uh, Egypt, came from Upper Egypt slash the Sudan, <laughs> slash regions that, that we call today the Sudan. But it was there all along in the Bible. All along it was there in the Bible. You know, whilst people were claiming, oh, you know, this is a Levantine civilization, it was there. <laughs> You know, and I, I I found that and I thought, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But it's just there because, the you know, the Bible isn't a textbook. It's not a scientific textbook. So you're just going to have to, you're going to find little gems like that dropped in casually. And it's going to make you go, what? Like the other day, I'll, I'll give you this, this, this is, now this is my assertion. This is not fact. But there's a passage in the Bible in which Paul, St. Paul is being um, arrested and he's been taken off. To, to see like a Roman judge for, for his crimes for preaching the gospel. And and this guy, one of the guards spots Paul and says, Paul, are you that Egyptian? You're that Egyptian guy who's been who's been like causing trouble, aren't you? And I thought to myself, oh my goodness. Right in there might just be a clue about Paul's complexion, about what he looked like. As a, if somebody was mistaking him in, in um, I think the scene took place in Jerusalem. If someone was mistaking him as an Egyptian without knowing his background, he must have had some color. I'm not going to go out right and say he was black, but I'll just leave it there. So the Bible's not going to give you like outright things like that. You're going to have to search. You're going to have to kind of be like, you're going to have to be paying attention to find little clues like that. Anyway, let's move on. What I think is going on with the women, nobody knows. There's no Egyptian script somewhere that explains it. But what I think is going on, I'll pre- I'll just show you what I mean. Um, let me just go out of this. Um, again, right, just quickly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is an Oromo woman. 
uh, more Oromo men, still the same Egyptian hairstyle, Oromo female hair, Oromo women and their hair. These are Ethiopian Nilotic people. Um, and there's the image I use for the thumbnail uh, for this for this stream. Metatron would call these men right here, all of them, he would say they were tanned. Okay, so Metatron, why have they got um, well patted down, perfect cir perfectly circular froze? What can only be described as combed, combed black hair. Well, what, what's, what's the reason behind that? Okay, pathetic. Right. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. What I when I talk about what, what when I when I um when I evince this theory about um what's going on with the women as per the men on Egyptian wall art. Um, yeah, yeah, Mackenzie, I caught that too. Mackenzie, okay, let me just, let me read some of your let me, let me read some of your comments actually before I go into this theory about the men and women. Mackenzie says Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian and Joseph too. See, I've thought that. I have actually read, I was reading the Bible and I thought, is that what's going on? Like, do we have a bit of crossover? Because as per the Bible, the Egyptians were in Egypt for like 400 years. You don't just, you don't stay in Egypt for 400 years and not mingle. Let's, assuming that the Israelites were uh, lighter skinned, what you would call Shemite people, you know, from from the um, from the from the line of Shem, as the Bible says it. So, assuming let's just assume. I know some people think that no, that you know Shem too was black, black skin. But let's just assume that they were white for argument's sake. You don't stay four hundred years in a place and um, not mix. Even Joseph was given the the daughter of Pharaoh to marry, and he had mixed children um, by that relationship. So that's not happening at the top and not, you know, just not happening at the bottom as well. Okay, so that's a good point, RJ McKenzie. Right. I'm going to I'm gonna just turn off the screen for a second. Um, I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to... Do you know what? No, 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 no. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's finish this. Let's let's actually finish this train of thought. I want to show you. Oh, I spent so long finding these images. Not even finding, but just I already had them, but I had to I had to arrange them so I didn't need the internet because my internet was untrustworthy. I got worm tongue in the um in in the um in the system somewhere. Again, if you're just joining us, worm tongue, Grimmel worm tongue, is um is uh, Metatron, um, called hieroglyphs. All right, let's have a look. Back to my screen. I'll show you. These are the images that you are not going to see. Uh, you're not going to see... Get off. You're not going to see Metatron show these. And this is what I'm saying. You look closely at the woman to the left of this man. This this black Egyptian man here. Her text, you can see that she had color. I think they're using a different mixture or intensity of the same, uh, of the same color, just to show that women are less virile. I'll give you another example of why I think this is, uh, why this is what's going on. You have, in nature, even in nature, the darker something is, the more, um, I was watching this nature show uh, a while back, and it was talking about how the darker the mane of a lion, the more testosterone and the more dominant he tends to be. The darker the mane of the, of the lion that you see, the more likely that he's actually the leader of his pride, you know, and it, they tend to, they, t they just, they just tend to have more testosterone. Um, and I think that transpired, we're, we're on the African continent here when we're talking about Egypt. I think 
they try to mimic that. Forget my forget my ramblings about some nature show I watched a long time ago. We have ancient Greek documents that talk about this. So in the ancient world, being a, of a darker hue was more masculine. I even think, I even think, um, oh, I was, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna save this for, I was gonna save this for what you call it, for a video, for a little short, but you guys, you know, you, you're, you, you, um, you drop by for the chat, so you deserve it, you deserve it, as, 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 you don't have to wait for the short, the, there's an Arabic word. This is shout out to the debunker for this because I I've not I've learned so much about Arabic just because of the debunker sending me a few uh, a few gems um, when I you know to do with the Moors. Now I keep I kept coming I I took I took the Arabic that was being sent by the debunker. I took it and I would put it into Google um, Translator. And it would come up with Adam. Where I was expecting black to come up, it would come up with Adam. I thought, what? What do you mean, Adam? I thought there was some kind of mess up. I thought, I thought the, the debunker was sending me like defunct Arabic or something. I thought, no, this doesn't make any sense. But then I looked into it. It just kept popping up. So I looked into it and it turns out that... The word Adam, Adamu, or Adamu, or I don't know how you would say it. I said it with a with a Yoruba inflection there. That's how that's how we say Adam in in that's how Muslims in in Yoruba land in West Africa, Nigeria, where I'm from. That's how they say Adam, Adamu. Um, turns out that that's actually synonymous with black. The word Adam, the name Adam, the first man to live actually is synonymous with the word black or brown it's another word that the you can check this out yourself i'm, I'm not gonna risk um going on the internet and kind of crashing my very delicate stream because uh, again i got a really um low budget software i'm streaming with um uh, but you can do that yourself the arabic word one of the arabic words for black is adam so again it looks like and I think that's because, uh, as per the Quran, just like the Bible, Adam was the first man and he was made from the soil. And what color is the soil? But black or brown. <laughs> so you've got the, the Arabs using that word um, in their language to synonymize, to, to indicate black. Now they've got their own word for black, I think it's, um, or brown, or I think it's asthma. Um, but um, they've got another word for it. But yeah, it just works out like that. Now that puts me, and I, I don't know what it does for you guys, but that puts me in mind of the word Kemet. People always constantly say that means the black land, the black soil. Yes, I agree. I agree. But I also think it was a play on words. I think it was a, it was a double entendre of a sort to refer to the fact that the people of the land were black like their soil. Kwelemika does a great job in, in pointing out a very obscure hymn, um, the hymn of Sesostris, I think, uh, or I think Senusret is the right word, is what the Egyptians call it. And he does a great job of pointing out that in this hymn, you have that play on words used to refer to the Egyptians. You have Kemet, you have the black... I'm going ahead of myself. I'm going ahead of myself. But anyway... That's my theory, that the black, the, the black or the dark uh, was kind of in a man, was kind of juxtaposed against a lighter hue in a woman to, to, to um, kind of display the fact that this is a man and this is a woman. Virility and softness, you know, strength and tenderness, simple. You don't have to... You don't have to um, stop making up things about right. Metatron goes on in the video. I'll play it. I'll play it. But I'm trying. I'm trying to save you guys the pain of listening to him. Um, but he goes on to say he doesn't know this himself. He's just copying and pasting what the um, so-called Egyptologists say. 
they've said this for a long time. He says, oh, it's it's because there's... N-, and they, again, Kweli Mika points this out in his response. The, the, in, in the video that got this controversy started, Kweli Mika pointed this out. He says, there's no actual papyrus where you will see this as a fact. We use lighter, yellowish or lighter colors for women because here's what Metatron and, and the rest of them say. Because men work out in the sun and women stay indoors. Listen, guys, Egyptian nobles do not work out in the sun. They're not writing home about the fact that I work in the sun all day. No, why should they? That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's the kind of stuff you leave for, your, for peasants. So why are Egyptian nobles writing about, uh, you know, make sure you get that tan on there because it shows I work out in the sun. What? Like, what are you on about? I, I, I don't work out in the sun. I'm, out, I'm here chilling in my, um, in my little villa, in my Egyptian villa. It's so like with a shade. Aren't we always seeing that? They're in a the shade. They've got their servants um, blowing them with palms or with feathers. So why, why are Egyptians, why are Egyptian nobles keen to portray themselves as burnt by the sun to this deep brown color? That's a complete, again, this is the psychosis I'm talking about. These are the kind of these are the kind of rationalized the explanations that you come up with when you're trying to get away from the obvious. Like the stupid starts to make more sense than the than the more like the more reasonable. Okay, let's move on. Again, I don't know what Metatron would call this man here. I, I guess he would say the man on the left, he would say, that's an olive man. His woman isn't Olive, she's nothing. She's just, a, she's a black person with a lighter shade. And you can see that the color on her is being washed off. Again, you can see that this color on this lady on the left was much stronger. It's been washed off because they're using a lesser intensity of it. Not that, there's no way this was, um, I've got a poor, a poor quality image right now. There's no way this image was, this light in its originality, okay, in its original state, right, let's just um, come out of that and go on to the next image, these are Egyptians, actually, this image you'll find on the, on the internet, typically under, um, under what you call it, Nubians, uh, so again, you've got the Nubians being painted in, in the dark brown. I don't, why would that be? I thought the Nubians were supposed to be jet black. Again, look closely at this. Just look closely at this image. You've got a black man being held by his black wife and the hue on the woman is just one degree, one or one and a half degrees lighter than her husband. And over time, this is going to fade even more. If it wasn't found and preserved when it was, I can guarantee you uh, we'd be calling this a yellow woman as well. We would ignore, that the, the Egyptologists would ignore her ringlety kinky hair texture that looks like many of the Oromo on Afar and and um, and Tigrayan women would ignore that and would say, "Oh, she's she's a white woman. She's a, she's an olive skinned woman, and her husband is olive skinned. He's just got a darker tan than her because he works the fields. But she's out in the fields with him. <laughs> she's out in this image. She's out in the fields with him. She's helping him. I don't know what he's doing." He's fishing, right? He, he looks like he's fishing. These are his kids. Look, the boys out, the, the, the boys out there, he's, he's, um, he's deep brown, black. And his sister right next to, uh, ne next to him is again, like her mother, a lighter shade, a lighter shade of the same color. Again, not yellow, just a lighter shade. So whatever's being used is being used at a lesser intensity so that it will fade where the male version, the male texture wouldn't, wouldn't readily fade. More images there. 
In this picture, you've actually got the woman darker. I think the woman's darker in this picture. Metatron did not show these images. He just went on to say, oh, it's, it's just look at these, these carefully chosen ones. <clears throat> By the way, watch the video, Metatron's original video, Where Egyptians Black, The Truth. Watch it. He's selective of the images. And nobody's saying they weren't white people. Don't, nobody's saying you wouldn't find... I mean, that's, that's stupid. I'm not going to call those images that Metatron shows on his video fake. You could easily do that. I know some people would. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. No one place on earth, like, especially not one, in e not one that's where Egypt is. No one place is, like, homogenous, that you won't find any other kind of person living there. So it would be like a thousand years from now, people finding images of, of um, I don't know, um, one or two, few black people living in Germany in the year 2024 and saying, see, the German civilization in, 2000 and, in the 2000s was black. Look at these black people. Yeah, but <laughs> look at all the other... Look at all the other pictures of white people. Are you going to ignore that? No, no. Just look at these ones. Look, this white person. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. What? <laughs> That's what they do. It's, it's psychotic. So nobody's claiming that you won't get white people being sure. The Egyptians had no reason to think 5,000 years ahead, people would be denying that they were black people. So... They were, they were like, yeah, cool, draw that woman, draw that man. You know, they're white. Who cares? <laughs> All right. All right, let's go. Let's keep going. I'm I'm just going through all these images because I I wait. I'm not gonna have any time wasted at all. I spent so long collating these images that I just don't want any time wasted. That was Queen Tia. People tell us. I think I was watching the King's monologue and great channel as well, by the way. Um, I've learned a lot from some of the King's uh, monologues work and he was doing something about Queen Tear. He was doing a live, I think, and I was looking at her bust and that video was an eye opener. It was more of an eye opener about the lengths that these people go to deny us our history because they say that this face of Queen Tear wasn't dark like this originally. It's gotten darker over time. But you can tell that's a lie because you can see quite clearly the difference in color between the headband there and her skin. You can tell why hasn't that headband darkened? This is the these are the lengths to which I am telling you right now that people with PhDs go on to use these arguments. They say these things, and we're supposed to take them seriously as experts. You can see that this wood is lacquered. You can see it's been glazed over. You can see that it's been painted. You can even see brush strokes on it. And you can see, what have you got to say about her lips? What have you got to say about her hair texture? What have you got to say about the fact that these people live in Africa today? What have you got to say about this representation of her? Broad lips again, thick li um, broad nose, thick lips. I've got this here. This is a this is a um, a band uh, a Totmosi uh, Totmosis bracelet, and again depicts somebody who you can only call an African man. You can see his kinky um, locks, small, tight kinky locks there that the Greeks depict in their uber realistic style that we've been through that we've that we've shown previously in this video, and you can see. You can just see that. You can see the fullness of his lips there, the prominence of his lips. This is actually a very small ivory bracelet. And they've gone through the effort to make sure his lips do not go inwards like it would do if it was an Asiatic or a person of uh, European descent. But the person who's carved this has given him a full, full cheeks and full lips and a receding nose bridge. Only in that, only when it comes to Egypt do we have to do, pardon my use of the term, this level of retarded analysis of what we're looking at. I feel stupid even talking about this. Only when it comes to Egypt do we have to start saying, 
Can't you see what you're looking at? Right. Let's go. I think I'm done now. I, I, I think that's, that's the last of those images. Let me play Metatron for a bit. Let me play Metatron for a bit. Let, let's hear Metatron speak. We've, um... We've shot him out far too long. Okay. All right, Metatron, back to you. Let's hear you. Let's hear your spiel, as it were. All right. Actually, before I do that, let me look at what you guys are saying in the chat. Um, in Arab tradition, the, the, the debunker says, in Arab tradition, Moses, Moses was seen as being a black man. I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that. Uh, the Kushi says, what we tend to forget or are unaware of is that during the time of ancient Egypt, the whole area of the Middle East was black. Subsequently, more recently, the cold mountain people invade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The cold mountain people. I like the cold mountain people, Kushi. I like them. It's some of them that um some of them that we have um a problem with. Some of them. And um and it's the same it's the same in our community. You've got black people out there as well on YouTube. You got um black folks on YouTube saying, Yo, yo, N words. I would use the actual word, I sound stupid. But I don't want to get demonetized on this video. YouTube keeps demonetizing my vid, uh, my lives. Um, I don't know. Maybe they I I don't know. I don't know. I think the first live I ever did, I used. I quoted someone saying the N word, and the AI must have ran through it and heard it. So, anyway, you've got you've got you've got black folks on YouTube saying you Negroes weren't um weren't um Egyptians. You need to. You're a tropical people. So you got black people doing the same stupid thing, um, maybe Uncle Rocker Uncle syndrome. I, I, it doesn't even have to be as, as serious as that. You could just have misinformed people, um, just thinking that they're on they're on to a winner. Um, but you know what? This cold mountain people. Be, I, I like the cold mountain people. I just speak up for my cold mountain people. We got some cold mountain people who love our content. Um, but I know what you're talking about. Some of the cold mountain people. Some of them. Okay. RJ McKenzie says, Hagar, the mom of Ishmael, was an Egyptian woman. Yes, she was. Um, well, that's tradition anyway. Tradition and oral tradition says that she was. And I believe that. And I think the Quran says she was as well. Um, and that she was a black woman. I know that, again, because the debunker sent me a quote on that specifically. That I'd never heard of. It says that she was from a region. She was from a tribe of black black egyptians that's one for another video in the future okay um so okay let's go let's go let's go uh right all right let's go let's play um let's play our friend mr worm tongue here all right let's go worm tongue men almost always look lighter in skin than their men and was there any inner and sometimes hidden meaning within color itself well each color was created by mixing various naturally occurring elements and each became standardized in time in order to ensure a uniformity in artwork an egyptian male was always depicted with a reddish brown skin which was achieved by mixing a certain amount of standard red paint with standard brown experts say that this color was chosen because it was a realistic representation of the average Egyptian. Women's skin instead was most of the time represented with a mixture of yellow and white. And the reason of the explanation to this is because women tended to... Again, carefully selected images. Very carefully selected images here. Oh, sugar. Um, I'm not actually... What You can't actually see what's on the screen. Sorry. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Be very prominent and as a separate. Let's have a Metatron have um you know, let him have his day. 
Ooh, oh my goodness, look what I paused it. Ethnicity, or as it did happen, black, depending on as you pose on your skin tone, maybe, I don't know. These classifications are indeed fluid, but I think we all know what we mean when we say black, like this guy. Here is what the Egyptians said. Look at this image. To the right, you see how the Egyptians represented themselves. The black gentleman is representing a Nubian, basically a member of the very prominent and very powerful and advanced kingdom of Kush. We don't need your patronizing. We do not need your patronizing. Thank you, Kualimika. I mean, I mean Kualimika, thank you, Metatron. Which was south of Egypt. And those are representations of an Asiatic and a Libyan. Of course, it's important to take into consideration the cultural and commercial and religious exchanges that happened between the kingdom of Kush and Egypt. Of course, a certain percentage of Nubians, which will differ depending on which area of Egypt we are talking about, will have lived among the Egyptians. But the Egyptians do represent themselves with this image with this specific color. Okay, I think it was lagging slightly. I'm gonna press play again. And with color and art, we enter a whole new range of topics that I'd like to hopefully simplify for this video. How did the Egyptians use and create color and why do Egyptian stop? Stop, stop, stop. I've always had a problem with this, um, this uh, portrayal that you see here. Why? It's one of the few types of... I think it even stands alone. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't stand alone. There are a few images that we're to believe that look like this, that are similar. A few statues that are similar to this, that we are to believe is authentic Egyptian, ancient Egyptian art. I was watching the King's monologue a while back and he wasn't, he wasn't sure himself and he wasn't willing to say outright that this was a fake, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say definitely this is a fake. This is a fake. And every other one that you see like it. Uh, every other image that you see like this is a fake. How do I know it's a fake? Why do I believe it's a fake? All right, let me show you something. No. Okay. Let me show you this. I made a short about this and we have respected Egyptologists who are willing to go out there and say, look, this is fake. This is actually fake. Uh, this is from the website of Professor Manu Anpim, who um, is at Merit University, I think. And um, he's working on a book right now. He's working on a book that will look into the forgeries. We know that there have been forgeries. We know that Egyptology is riddled with forgeries because the era it came out of was the era of denial and racism. And when the forgers and also greed. So a lot of people wanted to make money quick off the... Um, of the Egyptology craze, of the Egypt craze. In the Victorian era, in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, there was a massive craze. Um, there was a massive craze. Guys, please, if you're in the chat, we've got um, 18 people. I think we've had, at the peak, we've had about 26 people in the chat uh, watching. Please drop us a like. Drop drop the video a like. Um, let's, let's get the likes up a bit at least matching the amount of people that it says we are watching right now. Okay, right. Yes, Cushy. Yeah, Cushy says he thinks it's a fake. Of course it's a fake. Manu Ampim, he says this uh, on his website. Professor Manu Ampim, let me put a bit of respect on that name. I'll go back up and 
Hopefully you guys can see what's on my screen. Uh, Rahotep and Nofret. Whenever you go on Quora, um, and it's such a toxic place, Quora is a toxic place for this kind of topic. It is filled with a... I always feel sick after visiting Quora. I just feel so sick and angry. And I, I never comment. I never. I don't have an account. I just leave it. Um, but they love to show... This image comes up again and again. See? They ignore every other one. <laughs> every, other that, every other image that shows Africans in ancient Egypt, proper Africans, they ignore it and they say, See? Look at them. These were the Egyptians. This is like one of maybe five in a whole, like, thousand, several thousand year period, you know, of ancient Egypt. And they always they always come to show these pictures and say, they look at the Egyptians. Look at them. Do they look Negro to you? Do they look like Negroes to you? This guy... Okay, Manu Ampin, Professor Manu Ampin of Merritt University, he's taught all over the place. He's currently at Merritt, Un Merritt College, I think. Um, he says that in this long... Uh, Professor Manu Ampin systematically documents what he calls two of the greatest forgeries in the history of ancient African archaeology. For the past 10 years, Professor Ampin has carefully documented that the statues of Prince Rahotep and his wife Nofret in the Cairo Museum are not authentic ancient Egyptian statues, but were in fact created in the 19th century by the hands of modern conspirators. Professor Ampim presents a painstakingly detailed research researched argument to show that these famous statues could not have been created in the Great Pyramid Age around 2600 BCE and that they were instead created by modern conspirators in a bold attempt to place a strange, pale-skinned couple in the middle of the 4th dynasty African royal family. Ampin presents an array of data to show that the Rahotep and Nofret statues are indeed modern forgeries. Ampin uses several ca categories of evidence to present a well cut up for a brief second. Okay. Professor Ampin presents a painstakingly researched argument. Yes, yes. Uh, a painstakingly uh, researched argument. Uh, sorry, so I'm, 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 I've lost my place. Uh, da, da, da. Comparisons of the famous Rahotep statue. So this is point two now. With all other known images of him, as well as comparisons with his family members and with dozens of other statues from the Old Kingdom. So what Professor Manu Ampim is saying is that when you compare this fake, this clear, obvious fake that they have in the Cairo Museum, that these experts have in the Cairo Museum, when you compare them with every other, I think the word is extant, every other extant image of Rahotep, Man doesn't have a, a, a Poirot moustache. What's going on? Why is Rahotep... What, like, where have you ever seen... Where have, what other images have you seen of Egyptians with a Poirot moustache? This really gets on my nerves. Forget all of that. Why is the paint in such good quality? Look at the paint. Or it's, the paint is still intact. And the woman here doesn't look like what we see for the most part with other um, females juxtaposed next to males, where you see the paint used for the female drying off, of, of kind of flaking off. This is a pure white woman. Okay, let me show you what Rahotep looks like normally on the reliefs. Oh, come on. It's far too clean. Medjay Commander, it is far too clean. It's an obvious fake. This is Rahotep on, on release that we know are, is definitely him. Once again, you've got the short, kinky, tight locks that the ancient Greeks depicted in uber-realistic form when they showed us Africans with braided, downy, Afro, um, uh, kinky dreads. You've got that going on. They, they, they like to call it a wig, but there's no evidence for that. Okay. You can see the deep brown flaking off this stele, this representation. You can see it. There is no 
sign of some strange mustache at all. Let's go on. This is a side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the fullness of lips. You can see the prominence, the prominent prognathism. And you can see, again, the dark brown flaking off, the washing off. Now, I, I suspect that with a lot of them, under the guise, under the name Restoration, they wash a lot of these off. That's my theory. That's my little conspiracy theory. But we know they do deleterious reconstructions to a lot of these um, monument structures. And they just come out and they say, well, we, we, we restored it. Okay, you just happen to have washed off all the color of this beautiful thing. I don't know what other kind of archaeological restoration does that to a, to to to, to the, its subjects. This there's no comparison between this authentic relief and this poirot looking creep that came from the age of fakes. There he is, just the wider aspect. The same thing there. There he is. No resemblance at all. Right, we know they do fakes. This is the, this is a fake figure, the, um, uh, Princess or Queen Tetisheri. Um, this is now known as a fake. You can Google it. It's still up um, in the British Museum, I believe, but it's labelled as a forgery. So we know it's a forgery, and we know that this was a thing. People got fooled. This was up as authentic for ages. And again, you can see a pattern with the forgeries. The African features are decidedly missing. You've got long aquiline noses and a kind of... We lead... We, from the side, we Africans tend to lead more with our lips. Even if you're talking about the Eastern Africans, we've still, on average, you've still got fuller lips and fuller prognathism than European people. Okay? So when you start to see supposed uh, Egyptian monuments without that element and with that 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 kind of stray from the the convention, the artistic convention, uh, then you know something's up. Then you know something's up. Again. Right. This is still up in Germany, this Nefertiti bust. I think someone mentioned this earlier in the chat. I think they said Nefertari, but they meant Nefertiti. The Nefertiti bust is a clear fake. They know it's a fake. And I could show you videos on YouTube. Um, there's a famous forger, ex-forger. Uh, he's done time. Who's come out and he said, this is an obvious fake. It's an obvious fake. <laughs> I commented today. On a video, uh, I could show you. Um, um, I, I, I can't be bothered, but I, I commented on a video about the Nefertiti bust. And people know it's fake. You know, these people know it's a fake. Um, but they just, they're just running with it for as long as they can. Um, we know it's a fake because supposedly in the same place they found this bust. No, not that. They found her daughter, Queen Mary Tatten, uh, Princess Mary Tatten. There's no resemblance. You've got the deep, dark brown complexion. You've got the thick lips. You've got not as broad a nose, admittedly, but again, that genetic, uh, that genotype, that phenotype is found in Africa all over. We don't all have, just like every white person doesn't all have pointy um, you know, aquiline noses, perfectly aquiline pointy noses, you know, every black person doesn't have broad, wide noses like I do. But this is a black girl. You can tell it's a black girl because you can see her braids. You can see how they've made, how the uh, sculpture has made, designed their hair to look. Unless you're crazy, unless you're insane, unless you suffer from the psychosis that we spoke about earlier, you're looking at this and you say, this is a black girl. This is a black girl. That's supposed to be another representation with um, 
hydrocephaly, I think it's called. You know, the big thing that we have on the back of our heads as Africans, we have that elongated skull. They've tried to say that that's aliens. They've tried to tell us that, oh, it's evidence of an alien seeding race, except that's the head that my kids have. <laughs> that's the head that my... And my kids are mixed. You know, my kids are mixed. Um, and they still have that big back head. And I, I, I'll often remark to my wife, look, look, at, look, at, look at the size of his head compared to, you know, one of their friends, one of their white friends. Look, look at the size. And you just, again, you're put in mind of this. When you look at their children, that's Akhenaten to the left and you've got um, Nefertiti to the right and you've got their children. And they've tried to say that these are, oh, these, these must be aliens. These are kids. It's more pronounced when we're younger. I'm a, I'm a Yoruba uh, guy. Uh, I'm a Yoruba guy from the Yoruba nation. I don't use the word tribe because that's imposed on us as well. That's to make us feel like, that's to make us into savages. Oh, you're from that tribe. No, no, no. We had nations before you all came over and decided to, draw these lines across. We had nations. We actually had our own empires. We had our own things going on. So we're not tribes. I'm from the Yoruba nation, okay? And from the Yoruba nation, um, you we have a name for it. We, have, we actually have a term for it, something that whites don't have a term for um, because it's not a thing in their, in their society. They have straight heads that go kind of vertical. We have... We have we have elongated horizontal heads at the back. And I think African-Americans can still find that. We call it Ogo. <laughs> you know, I'm saying, I don't know if there's anyone out there who understands what I'm saying. Or we could say, you know, that that's another word for it. The big long back head. Not aliens. You know, not aliens at all. Just that's us. That is actually us, but... Um, let them tell it. These guys are aliens. <laughs> you know, it's just it, psychosis all over, everywhere, in this field, everywhere. And yet we're the ones stealing history. It's depressing. If you let it get to you, you know, if you let it get to you and, you know, I think the truth is getting out there. Thanks to King's monologue. Th thanks to Mr. Emotep. Some of these guys, I couldn't keep watching these guys and not start my own stop, not, not start my own channel. I couldn't. These guys were massive inspiration. Kweli Mika was the final straw. His work was like, okay, right, I gotta get on this. I've got to get on this and share my perspective because I got something to offer as well on this topic. And the, it's getting out there. It's like a, it's like a, um, it, it will accumulate. They will have to. And you know what, guys? They are actually already. I'm waiting for Metatron's next video on this topic. He's done this thing. <laughs> he's done this thing where he's saying, um, where he's, he's, he's not made a response. Again, guys, give the video a like. Give us, give, give, um, up the likes in here, please. We've got a measly eight likes. I'd like to see those likes go up, please. Thank you very much. He's doing this thing where he's not responded. He said, if you go on his channel, you said um, he's put out a video not long ago uh, saying he's got family issues and um, that's why he's not uploaded for a while, except he is uploading. If you go on his channel right now, he's uploading loads of content, but he won't make a response to Kweli Mika until he can find plausible deniability. Until he can find something to say, because he can't. Kweli Mika's nailed him down. Kweli Mika nailed this man to the wall. Right, I'm wasting time because I want. I even want to. I want to. I plan to get to some of um like the other videos, um Kweli Mika's video as well. So I got an article here that I had to take a screenshot of because I didn't want to depend on my tabs, which are, are prone to crashing, and. This is an article from 2009, I think, in the Sunday Morning Herald. It might be the San Francisco-based paper, I'm not sure. But um, the bust of Queen Nefertiti housed in a Berlin museum and believe... So, sorry, 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 sorry. Before I go on to this, it's obvious Nefertiti is a fake because she looks nothing like her daughter or daughters. And the bust of Nefertiti 
completely eradicates the Negro features that you would otherwise see when you, excuse me, when you look at the other representations of, of this woman. Here you have Nefertiti, but, uh, sorry, yes, Nefertiti, that's right, Nefertiti, behind her husband, Akhenaten. There's, you, you can't, again, unless you've got the psychosis, the racist psychosis, you're not looking at this man, deep brown hue, brown, black man, thick lips, broad, receding nose bridge, almondized, from the side, clear black man. You're on the continent of Africa now. Mind you, you are on the continent of Africa. Look at his wife right behind him. Again, the same thing can be said about her. Again, a slightly more less, I believe, powerful hue has been used for her, thus the wearing off of it. Far quicker. The same thing is happening to Akhenaten's hue, but at a at a slower pace. You look at Akhenat, you look at uh, uh, Nefertiti, broad nose, thick lips. Once again. But the bust has none of that. The bust is a complete. Do you know what? I'm done. I'm done on this topic. This is this is stupid. This is ridiculous. So frauds, um, um, frauds, fakes are completely rife um, in Egyptology. I say are, ah, not used to be are, ah, because that Nefertiti bust is still in the museum, in a reputable, so-called reputable museum today in Europe, in, in, in Germany, being passed off as, oh, the, the, but how could you hate a people so much? This is why I can't get my head around, actually. How could you hate a people so much that these are the lengths that you're willing to go to to deny them their history? Why? Like, guys, what have we done? What have we done that's not been done by any other people? You know, like, we're not... <laughs> I, I, anyway, whatever, whatever. I'm going to get emotional. This is supposed to be a straight professional video. Um, debunking. Taking away systematically um, the lies. Um, let's go back to our friend over here. Let's have him... Um, Women almost always look lighter in skin than their men. And was there any inner and sometimes hidden meaning within color itself? Well, each color was created by mixing various naturally occurring elements and each became standardized in time in order to ensure a uniformity in artwork. An Egyptian male was always depicted with a reddish brown skin, which was achieved by mixing a certain amount of standard red paint with standard brown. Experts say that this color was chosen because it was a realistic representation of the average Egyptian. Yes, I second that. I second that, RJ McKenzie. It's pure demonic. It's a demonic thing. And you know why it's even, it's demonic? Because it, it comes with the lie of, oh, we're just, we're just, we're just experts. We're, we're just experts looking dispassionately at the ancient, the archaeological record. What, what, what do you mean, you Afrocentric? It's, it's, <laughs> that's why it's demonic. It's got, it's got that extra layer of deceitfulness to it, like gaslighting, a, a weird gaslighting that, oh, I can't even begin to explain. Women's skin instead was most of the time represented with a mixture of yellow and white. And the reason of the explanation to this is because women tended to work the field a lot less than men. They stay, tended to stay inside and... Where's your source? Where's the papyrus that states that? Where's the where's the um, hieroglyphic ins inscription? I shouldn't say that because you know they'll come up with one. Like their little fake genetic test, they'll they'll fake something and they say, "Look, see, we told you." Yeah. With your Dulux paint on it. Therefore, their skin was lighter. If the difference in skin tone between men and women is dark. I wonder what part of this image has been cut off. I don't know what where this painting is from, but I wonder what the rest of it looks like. 
darker or lighter depending on how much time they spend outside, then it suggests that even the darker tones we see are mostly a tan rather than the actual natural color that all Egyptians would have. So it is possible that a light brown would be a good representation when it comes to what the ancient Egyptian skin looked like. If they were all black in the sense of a Nubian, they would not represent the Nubians and themselves differently in art. And of course, a Nubian's skin color is going to be black, whether it stays inside. Okay. Let's just quickly, Kwelimika did this, but I'm just going to do it for the sake of my life as well. Let's quickly have a look at women depicted on their own without men next to them um, in just normal brown, black color. The color that you would depict most black people. There we go. All righty then. Uh, again, Kwelimika does this. He does it well in his video. Uh, here are some women there. Um, again, they just look like black people to me. Black women. That you find in the east of Africa today. More black women. If you look at the top there, I'm willing to bet at the very top, is the feet of a man and what you see next to him isn't a isn't a yellow is a slightly less full uh it's a yeah less um cogent potent um brown which over time is gonna end up looking probably yellow if not just fading completely but on their own these are brown women these are black brown women that you see in the Tigray region, in the in the in the Sudan, in the north of the Sudan. And here's some um, Egyptians hairdressing. Right, here are here are real real Egyptians. Again, nothing surprising here. Some are lighter, some are darker. Well, you wouldn't paint paint these people jet black, but we still not we. Unless you're stupid, unless you want to be obtuse, these are black people. And these people fit what you see on the walls. Okay, there we go. More of them. There we go. Done. Right. Let's keep going. The gods are represented with many colors, but they are symbolic when it comes to their skin. They can have a red skin, which usually has to do with aggression and evil in a way. Although it can also symbolize life. Some gods have a blue skin, which represents protection and wisdom. Other gods have a green skin, such as oftentimes Osiris, because it's a connection to the afterlife. And when it comes to black skin in Egyptian art, even though it does have a connection to death, which is why we sometimes see gods such as Anubis having black skin, it was not connected to evil. Red was. I don't know why. Um, I don't know what he's talking about there, but well, he knows what he's talking about. Um, let's talk about the selectivity. Metatron's done something very cunning. They're very disgusting. He's shown you. I don't know if you remember. He showed you a war painting of Nubians, supposedly, and they were all black, jet black. On the same wall. On the same fresco, on the same... If you zoomed out... Now, you, he, he's either just copied and pasted his argument. Or he knows that if you zoom out of that image, that image is part of a larger wall. Shout out to Tukweli Mika for putting me onto this. That image is part of a larger wall that shows you that this black and brown thing is interchangeable. The Egyptians are just depicting difference, variance in skin tones. Let's let, let me um let me um let's
Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Can you guys still hear me? Um, just someone drop a uh, number one um, in the chat, please. I've, I might have hit a wrong button somewhere. Um, I'm just hoping I haven't. But um, if you can hear me, just press one, please. I'd, um, that'd be a great favor. Okay. Um, I think you can hear me. People let me know anyway, so I'm just going to carry on. So I'm looking right now. Let me put my screen back up for you guys. Thank you, Meiji. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, right, 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 right. Can you guys see that? I think you can. All right. This is the wall that Metatron puts up. He either doesn't know about this, which means he's not the great scholar he thinks he is, or he knew and he just showed you the part he wanted to show you. This is a Nubian procession. Um, attending to the Pharaoh, I think, I believe. And you can see a variation of the Nubian skin tone. You can see deep black, jet black, as you would do. Uh, and you can see some of them in... <laughs> Meje says he knew. You can see some of them in brown. Again, just one shade, one or one and a half shade away from the jet black. Nubians, all along, horizontally. You can see this guy right here, in the same color as Egyptians typically depict themselves. This guy next to him, black, pure black. Um, you, I don't, I don't know if you can see my cursor, my my um my hand on on the screen, but in any case, I'm talking from, I'm now looking far right no pun intended so. look at that look at that look at this look at this look at this wall some of them are really light really light brown but they're in the same procession of nubians they're all nubians now all nubians some you, you other than the color there's no difference same indentation where the nose bridge is normally prominent uh, in Europeans. Same fullness of lips, same jotting lips, outwardly jotting lips. And if you're in doubt that it's a new Nubian procession, they're even bringing these exotic, these animals that you tend to get further inward, um, inland in Africa. A giraffe at the bottom there, nearer to the right. Okay, Metatron. Let's show you a fuller image of this um, war depiction. Here are more Nubians, some jet black and some brown. This blew my mind. I used to wonder about this. I used to think maybe that before I, when I was a very, when I was on the um, fringes of this debate and I, it just every now and then it would just kind of like catch my eye. Like, oh yeah, people, someone's arguing again about the Egyptians with what color they were. Mm, interesting. Ah, uh, hmm. Probably for the most part, Middle Eastern, yeah, whatever. These are the images that they would... The kind of deception that Metatron did is what would convince me, oh, uh, yeah, they were probably mi Middle Eastern for the most part. I did not know that you could go into the, into, the, into the record and see Nubians interchangeably, like, brown... Uh, uh, depicted interchange uh, depicted using sorry depicted using the brown color interchangeably with the black color i didn't know that met uh Kweli mika's video blew my mind and i'm talking about his response video to to this rubbish this pile of garbage i thought okay okay like 
what's going on? By then, I was already kind of suspicious anyway. I, I, by, by this time, by the time I'm watching Kweli Mika videos, I'm thinking, it's a lie. The Egyptians wear black. They've, 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 these guys, man, they've sort of supplied the garbage. But I wasn't, sometimes I'd have a bit of doubt. The kind of, the kind of tricks that Metatron just played is what would put that doubt in my mind. Then I saw the Kweli Mika video and I thought, oh my goodness. This is disgusting. This is trash. This is absolute... <laughs> Talk about stealing history. Right. This is the full wall. This is the full wall. And you can see there. You can see a whole range of colours from the Nubian procession. You go closer. You see very black at the top there. In the middle section. You see... So... You're not talking about people who are olive skinned there. You're talking about black people. You're talking about black people. Look at this. I want this to be seen by everybody on in the replay. This is the full tomb of Hoy. Right here in the far left. You will see Nubian captives, some jet black, and some brown. See what I mean by the skin, the, the the skin peeling off to leave over time. Look at this, look at this guy on the far, far left, the last of the of the captives here. What? So let me go back to this. Look at the last of the captives in the middle here. Look at what's happened as the collar's gone, as the collar's as the collar's kind of worn off. Even look at the Nubians. Look at the jet black Nubians. Wow, wow. Look at how much collar's gone there. Wow. What's going on? Oh my goodness. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, is it even is it even being chipped off at times? Is it being chipped off deliberately at times? Because look at look at the Nubians sat on the um on top of the boat there. Is the black there being chipped off? I don't know. Anyway, you can see that this colour can wear off over time. The Nubian on the far left is brown, not black. But well, you can see in this mid section, in the midriff section, that's peeled off a considerable degree, you know. And there you go. No, no mystery about it. Just different skin tones of black people, indigenous to the continent. You would have to be crazy to go out of Africa, go and find some olive people, then say they were painting themselves tanned to say, okay, that's what's going on. Again, it's a stupid argument. I think somebody already said this is an easy argument to debunk. I'm not even gonna let's just let's just watch the man talk some more rubbish. So what about the term Kemet? Well, Kemet has been used again by some people trying to push this idea that all Egyptians were black and it was a black civilization because they say that it means Nobody said all Egyptians were black. Nobody ever said all Egyptians were black. Okay? If you want to if nobody said that, you will find just like you'll find in America, black Americans or or um, black Europeans, black British people. It doesn't mean it's not a white culture. It's not a white society, does it? Moron. So, uh, no, no, no. Listen. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, I just did it. I just did it again. Right. Come on. Okay. I will be charitable the land of the black and therefore if the Egyptians refer to their own land as this is the land of the black then it means that they consider themselves black but it's interesting that the people that I've read in forums they say this but then a minute before that they actually say oh but the Egyptians did never refer to themselves or other people as black and white and brown that's a modern construct and this already shows you lack of intellectual honesty because you can't say that the Egyptian didn't use black brown and white to describe 
people and then a minute afterwards use it when it comes to the translation of the word Kemet when it's convenient to you. Kemet meant black land, meaning that was the color of the land, the soil. Scholars generally believe that this name derived from the fertile soil that was left over when the Nile flood receded in August. Considering the fact that the very people that pushed this idea of all the ancient Egyptians were black. He's about to use a straw man. He's about to come up with a fake person using a fake argument and then knock it down. Um, first of all, I've explained if you just joined us, they most likely, most likely used Kemet. Um, it was a double entendre to refer to, to, ref to, to reflect the color of the soil, as he's saying, but the other half to reflect the fact that they were black people. Um, I'm trying to think of a good... Anyway, just a play. Did say on multiple occasions that the Egyptians did not use color as a word to describe people, then I would say on their own terms that it is more probable that Kemet referred to the land being black, not the people. All right, let me just look at the chat quickly. Medjay Commander says something here. Medjay Commander says, um, this is why Egyptologist Miriam Lichtheim in 1990 wrote that the Egyptians were not Nubians and the original Nubians were not black. Nubia gradually became black because black peoples migrated northwards out of Central Africa. <laughs> That's a that's a that's a legit quote, is it? Wow. Wow. They even tried to claim the Kushites. <laughs> yeah, they even tried to claim the Kushites. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows the Kushites are black, but they even they still do. Medjay Commander, they still do. They still say you have people come into the comments and say they weren't Bantu, whatever that's supposed to mean. They weren't Bantu. Like, I think they're supposed to mean. But you know what? Um let me he heads up for this. Um, the spirit behind that kind of a comment is the same spirit that stratified black people along basically the Hutus and the Tutsis. Think about that. Uh, they were different. They were different nations, not tribes. Again, watching that word. They were different nations. But the Europeans came along and made that. They intensified that division. They said, I can't remember which group now. They said, you Hutus or whatever you are, you've got longer noses, more aquiline noses, less full lips. So therefore, uh, you you know, you're, you're more Caucasian in your heritage. Whatever kind of weird, you know, science uh, th that they came up with. And they used that rationale to leave the... Hutus or whoever it was in charge of the majority population, the Tutsis. And it was, they do that all over the place. They divide and conquer. They divide and conquer. Uh, the racist mindset divides and conquers like that when it suits them. You know, ordinarily, we know what they're saying about us. We know what we're, what, we know what they're saying about, uh, you know, these elites. We know how they really see all the mass of humanity, uh, even even non not along black and white. Let's let's call it what it is. It's an elite thing. For the most part, the working man in 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 Europe has is is not different to the working guy just trying to make a buck in anywhere else in the world, you know. But at the very top, they will they will accentuate our differences so that. We're busy fighting each other rather than seeing how similar we actually are, you know. So they do that all the time. You have people come. So what they're trying to do now, now that it's looking like, okay, the dam's about to burst. Everybody knows the Egyptians were black. What you're getting, and I'm just going to, I need you to pay attention to this. You will see what you're getting in the comments is they went Bantu or they went black, black. You know, they weren't actually black. You can see that there's some Asiatic there. And that's that's the element that really matters to them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it, it, 
All this time, they've denied that they were black. They were black Africans. Now that it looks like we're onto, the, we're onto their tricks, now they want to divide. They want to say, yes, but, but they weren't African-Americans. Stop. Well, actually, the African-American type can be seen. The, the straight-up Negroid type is all over ancient Egypt too. As you can see, as we've been showing for this evening throughout. So, but that's what they want to do now. They want to give up, but at the same time say, well, it's still not, they're still not black, black, because, you know, they look more like, they're doing it now. They're trying to say that they're trying to have their cake and eat it. You know, it's just a great English expression. They're trying to sw swallow their cake and then say, well, um, still have still have it in their hands, you know, like you can't do that. You can't all this time say they weren't a black people, but now when you want to admit they were black people, they weren't that type of black people. What? What are you talking about? But when it comes to the analysis of DNA, there are several methods the scientists can use, including the direct PCR, a method of DNA amplification directly from an animal or plant tissue sample without performing... Okay, Metatron's talking about... Um, Metatron's talking about DNA and genetics now, okay? He's talking about DNA and genetics. Oh, by the way, um, I saw someone in the chat just now. I think it was Kushi. Kushi said something about red hair. Because she said something about red hair, he said, um, let me just go back and have a look. Nubians notice that their hair is blonde, red, and brown. And brown. Anyway, I don't know exactly what you're saying there, but let me just show you something. Because uh, this is something else that they like to say. They think it's a big, uh, the detractors, let's call them. They like to say, well, uh, such and such pharaoh was found with red hair. I'm going to look into it so I can properly source that statement. But as per studies in the past, red hair is just as frequent amongst Africans as it is, wait for it, in Europeans. But I, ha I do have um, studies for you guys. Um... Let me just, let me just write. There we go. There we go. It's a known thing. Now, whenever the um, scientists, the biologists, uh, the doctors, um, whenever they've tried to study this, they don't, they can't nail it down. At first, they thought it was albinism, a form of albinism, um, but the science has moved on from that, from what I real, from what I know. They they don't call it that anymore. They used to call it something called Xanthism or something. Um, they don't even call it that anymore. There are studies, there are people who believed that it was um there's an M there's a Brock, there's a scientist Brock from a paper from 1953, in which he puts it down to malnutrition or you're not getting a particular enough of a particular vi vi vitamin. Um, but that's not conclusive either. I'll just show you some of these blacks with, um, with red hair. But that's a common thing. That is a common thing in Africa, but nobody writes home about it because it's just, I don't know. Um, let me just show you. There's a, there, here's a man from the east of Africa, um, again, red hair, and apparently it tends to intensify with time. Um, here's a um, young black child with that red hair, just like you get, they don't, they haven't worked out what it is, Very that's, that's as red as you can get on him. And again, another one. You actually tend to get these people in Nigeria as well, in the west of Africa. You get them southwest of Africa, you get them in Angola. Um, but you've got the red hair thing. Now, 
I'll show you an article. Is this it? Let me see. One sec. Right, there's a eugenics paper from 1953 uh, where they go to Nigeria to study um, this, what they think is a condition at first. And I think they found like one in 500, something as high as, uh, let's have a look. Still here, guys. I'm just looking for this study for you. Um, We're talking estimates of one in one in a thousand. Um, there we go. Right, I'm gonna put the screen back up. Yeah, red as in red hair, red hair, not dyed or anything, just red hair. It's common in Africa. It's actually more common than you think in Africa. And when two people with red hair get together, they have kids with more red hair, is what this study shows. Uh, frequency of red hair color. This is by a study. Let me go back to the top. Or I'll, show you what, I'll show you the title at the, at, after quoting this. It is obvious that without an extensive collection of samples for spectral photometric examination, only an approximate idea of the frequency of red hair color in the population can be given. During a survey of schools in Lagos, 11,059 children, 7,036 boys and 4,023 girls were seen with a view to estimating the frequency of red hair. Nine of these were regarded as having strong red hair and a further eight uh, one out of 1,382, I think that's the girls, and um, one in every, yeah, one in every 1,382 for the boys, one in every 1,229 had darker shades of red. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. A further eight had darker shades of red, so one in 1,382. If the two groups are considered to belong to a single category, the combined frequency is one in 650. One in 650. This frequency considerably exceeds the writer's 1952 estimate of the frequency of albinism in the same area, which was approximately one in 5,000, etc., etc. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So people coming and saying people found with red hair doesn't, doesn't mean anything does not mean anything because it's as frequent as that. It was as frequent as that done 60, 70 years ago in the deep south, like like we're talking West Africa, Lagos. That's, that's anyway, what, just whatever. Uh, right. Let's go on to Metatron's genetic um, claims. He's going to now use um, genetic studies. He's going to use genetic studies to debunk Afrocentrism. All right, let's listen to what he's got to say. DNA isolation and purification steps. This technique greatly reduces experimental time and cost in genotyping and high volume projects, but it does come with issues surrounding the authentication of the retrieved DNA and the potential contaminations inherent to this method. Say the hot Egyptian climate, the high humidity levels in many tombs, and some of the chemicals used in mummification techniques, in particular sodium carbonate. All of these contribute to DNA degradation and are thought to render the long-term preservation of the DNA of mummies improbable. Okay, so he's just prefaced his thing about DNA and using genetics to prove the race. He's prefaced it with... <laughs> It's actually quite unreliable. 
and he's told us why. The humidity, the heat, everything. Uh, that's okay. Like, that's fair enough. But he's going to go on to talk about the genetic studies as though they're super reliable. So this is another thing they do. They tell you the truth on the one hand, side of their mouth, and then they go on to act, tell you something completely contradictory. And you're left thinking, what? Like, but you just said... Anyway, he's just told you that they're very unreliable. But yet again, Egyptologists will say, ignore what you see on the walls, ignore the statues, ignore the um, uh, the, the the writings that tell us, you know, that they value the South as their birthplace, as Nubia as their birthplace. Ignore all of that. Look at our genetic studies. And that will solve the, the issue. Uh, Metatron also said something else. Metatron says, um, he goes on to say, uh, well, he just said that, oh, well, uh, PCR testing is uh, uh, massively based on PCR testing. Here's, here's what they don't tell you about PCR testing um, for, for just about anything. So a lot of these genetic tests are based on a PCR test. Okay, that's good. Let me show you something. I really had to work hard to find this, but I found it in the end, and um, I found it in the end, and I was so glad I found it, because it's actually very important, okay, uh, where is it gone to? Okay, um, I think it's... For me, genetics will never be the clincher. I will always sit genetic testing at because it's as we've seen, as we've seen, as Dr. Christopher Eretz and many others have pointed out in the famous or infamous 2017 study, these things can be easily manipulated to give the answer that they want to. So they did a 2017 study that was supposed to show the fact that the, 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 the Egyptians were clustered genetically with people of the Levant. Except what they didn't tell you, or what they told you in the small print of that study, is that, <laughs> and I think this is the study that Metatron is using here, what they didn't tell you, unless you looked in the small print, was that the samples were taken from a specific location, which was as far north as you could get in Egypt, not far from the coast there, and was from a time period, a narrow time period, which had the most influx, the most rapid influx of lighter skinned people from Greece, uh, 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 Persia, you know, so you had the pre-Ptolemaic period, the Ptolemaic period, and the post-Ptolemaic period, right? And you have scientists coming out, the experts who have come out and said, this is this is rubbish, this is nonsense. You've chosen, Christopher Eretz says in his video on this, let's see if we can find it. I'll show you what Christopher Eretz says about this study. Oh, no, no, Cushy. Um, the Cushy says, I think a lot of the red hair is henna. It's henna dye. I could be wrong, though. No, I, the pictures I showed you, that's not henna. That is actually their hair. They've been studied. They've, 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 there's lots of pictures on the internet of them, of these black African people with red hair. Actually red hair. The ones you're thinking about, um, the Himba people, uh, they're from Angola. And I think the Kenyans as well, some Kenyan tribes, some Kenyan, oh, there, I said it, some Kenyan nations, yes, they do use henna, but I'm talking about real African people um, with actual red hair. So I'll show you those images again if I can at some point, but um, I'm 
more bothered to show you about what Christopher Eretz. Let me let let me play what he says for you guys, and you can see what I'm talking about. Where is this? Dynastic Egyptian culture. Okay, let's get this back on the screen. Uh, by the way, this is just going off here for a second. Uh, some of you may have seen or heard about a recent genetics article that makes uh, the ancient Egyptians out to be Levantines. Uh, let me be very clear. These findings come from one locale and a large stretch of possible locales in northern Egypt, and the finds date well after the foundational periods of, of uh, ancient Egypt. It's somewhat as if, uh, I was thinking of this particular image, rather than investigating DNA uh, from a 17th century cemetery in Plymouth, we instead choose to investigate DNA from a later 19th century cemetery in South Boston. And then we conclude, having done that, that the United States was founded by people of Irish descent and that Americans were predominantly, are, are predominantly Irish. Well, that isn't necessarily how the uh, writers of the article meant it to be interpreted, but that's certainly the way I've had people interpreting it to me. Even There we go. So as, as per Dr. Christopher Eret, um, that study is completely stupid. You can't take, you can't take samples from a grave site uh, in Brooklyn or uh, in Boston and then do a DNA study on it, and then say, oh, the people that founded America, the, the, the Americans, were Irish. You know, they, they were all... They, it's, it's just... Anyway, whatever. But that's what they did with this study. But it doesn't matter because the racists like to use it and so say, there's been genetic studies. So this is why I'm very sceptical about gen these genetic studies, because you can twist them how you want and you only know if you start to dig deeper and sometimes we're even lucky to find the information that we need to, to dig deeper to find hmm what have you really done here let me show you what um let me show you what um the genetic tests are really based on I hope we're having a good time. Um, I don't know what time it is now in America. We started this about two hours ago. What? So it's right now. It's one thirty here in the morning. One thirty, and you got twelve thirty. Yeah, that cool. Started this about two and a half hours ago, I think. Right. But I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it because, like I said, I don't want to be discussing this again. I want to have said my piece on this. And let the chips fall where they may. And let me just um, let me just show you this. Okay, it's eight thirty three in Canada. Hope you're still having a good time, though. Hope you're still having a good time spending time with me. If everybody goes, I'll still be here talking to myself. So I don't really care. Um, but I'm so happy that you're here anyway. I'm I'm impressed by your tenacity and your enthusiasm for this topic. Rewriting, not rewriting, but putting it right. Okay, here's Carrie Mullis on... I want to ask this to Carrie. How do they... Um... Right, I'm putting this back on screen. If you've missed, if you've missed a lot, right? Say you've missed, say you've missed everything that um, I've said up till now. Uh, this bit is important. I really, I need to get people, I need to get people's attention for this. So these DNA tests that they're constantly writing about and saying, oh, you know, uh, meta, you know, it, it proves this and it proves that. Here's why I don't place much stock in them. Apart from the fact that they're easily manipulable, they also, in Metatron's word, depend invariably very um, much so on PCR testing. We saw a lot of PCR testing during the um, so-called pandemic um, a few years back. I won't go into that. 
But here's the inventor of the PCR test that's used in, that's a key element of these DNA tests, these genetic tests, right? Yes, Medjay Commander, the site that they used for that genetic test was the Abu Sir, uh, and it was um, mainly a Greco-Roman burial site. Exactly. You've taken samples from a Greco-Roman burial site and you've said, look, see? Anyway, right. Here's Carrie Mullis, the inventor of the PCR test, which is used pivotally in genetic testing for um, the ancient Egyptians um, today. Here's what he has to say about the PCR. This is the guy who invented the test. I want to ask this to Kerry. How do they um, misuse PCR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there? Uh, is this, um, I think misuse PCR is not quite... I don't think you can misuse PCR. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say... If, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else. Pause. Let's go back. Listen to what he says about the PCR. He says you can't misuse it as such. It's a tool. It's a, it's a zooming in tool. You use it to zoom in on something. You can almost find anything you want to with the PCR test. It depends on the notches by which you turn it on by. It depends on the dial. This is what he's saying. I'll rewind it so you can, you can hear it again. He's struggling to explain what he's talking about. But listen again. It's a very difficult concept for him to get across. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you if you if you can say, if if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and bear in mind, it's normally used to find viruses at the RNA level, ribonucleic acid level. That's just one word removed from deoxyribonucleic acid DNA. Okay, it's found. It's used on genetic material, and he's saying. Listen to what he's saying about it. The PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else, right? I mean, so you can find almost anything you want in anything using the PCR test. It, only, it just depends on who's in control of the dial. However, however that dial works. There's another video in which he goes into more detail about how it works. This is the guy who invented the DNA, the PCR test, which is at the uh, forefront of the technology used to, in these supposed DNA tests of ancient Egyptians a lot. I mean, because if you can amplify one single molecule up to, a, to something that you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's just very few molecules that you don't have at least one single one of them in your body okay so that could be thought of as a misuse of it just to, to claim that it's meaningful but the the real misuse of it is is it, it, you don't need to test for hiv you don't need to test for the other ten thousand retroviruses that are unnamed also in the subject see somebody that's got hiv generally is going to have almost anything that you can test for because they have definitely been hiv is a fairly rare virus Okay, so it's now going on to talk about, because um, they use it to test for HIV, and it was what was used in the um, quote-unquote pandemic um, to test people for these things. And uh, I don't want to go too much into it. That would definitely get the thing, the, the stream demonetized. But a lot of that was sleight of hand. You know, you'd have, you'd have infections going down, but not really going down. It's just the... Um, control tower somewhere has decided we're going to use a different oh, it's really complicated a different sort of a gauge um by which to a different set of standards we're turning the notch down so now we're using a times 
two zoom rate as opposed to a times eight zoom rate, which we were using before to find this infection in people at the genetic level, almost at the genetic level. But what happens if you use a times two as opposed to a times eight? Less people are infected. Who? Who knew? We can't find anything. But when they wanted everyone to kind of get back indoors and be scared again, they turn the test right back up again. And we're back at times eight again. And oh, everyone's everyone's got this thing, you know, and we all need to be scared again and make sure you get your um, pokey pokies. Uh, Carrie Mullis is saying this is this this is how it works. So it's not really a tool for misuse. He's saying it's the interpretation of it. It's it's what you want to see when you want to see it. Everything is everything that you want is there. Um, and this is what they they use constantly for genetic testing um, for of these mummies. That's what's up. So when next you hear someone say, "Oh, we've genetically tested the mummies and it shows this," you should go, "Hmm, what was that? The f- what was that? The f- what what was being used? Was it? Are you, are you, were you using the PCR, um, the polymay, the, the the polymase chain reaction um, uh, uh, test?" Polymerase, I think it is. All right, let's move on from this. Let's go back to our friend, um, Metatron. And let's quickly go back to him and see what he's got to say for himself now that we've heard that. Okay. Here we go. Right, blah, blah, blah. This video is brought to you by Atlas v- no, Skin. They can have a red skin, which usually has people as black. The soil. When it comes to the analysis surrounding the authentication of the authentication techniques, in particular sodium carbonate, all of these contribute to DNA degradation and are thought to render the long-term preservation of the DNA of mummies improbable. Now, some of you might ask, why bother with ancient mummies at all? Why don't you just check and analyze the DNA on modern day Egyptians? And the thing is that in order to do that, you would have to have a perfect genetic continuity over thousands of years, millennia. And that is very improbable considering the recent population admixtures from both other areas of Africa, Europe, considering Roman and Greek colonization and the Islamic expansion. Even without genetic proof, it would be very unlikely to expect such a perfect continuity between ancient Egyptians and modern Egyptians, and this study, in fact, demonstrates so. 166 samples from 151 mummified individuals were examined for this study, 90 of which you will find in the later analysis in the supplementary data 1. According to radiocarbon dates, these samples can be classified into three time periods, pre-Ptolemaic, Ptolemaic and Roman period. Scientists found that the three ancient Egyptian group clusters supported a certain level of genetic continuity over 1300 years, but showed a higher affinity with modern day people from the Levant and the Middle East, an affinity supported on some of the individuals with a find of the Y chromosome haplogroups. On the nuclear level, Metatron, uh, Quelimica explains the whole haplogroup versus um, genotype, um, haplotype versus genotype and phenotype um, very well in his video. Uh, I'm going to skip a lot of this. I don't know, guys. So, right. Let's have a vote. Who wants to skip and just go to Kweli Mika's, um Press 1 if you want us to watch this to the end. Press 2 if you want us to go straight to Kweli Mika's response. Let me know in the chat because I need to... I, 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 don't, I don't really know about listening to the rest of this guy's little um, spiel. He's... I've debunked him. Mr. Imhotep has debunked him. Um, Kwelimik has debunked him. All right, Medjay Commander, you want us to move on? Um, this guy, Grass CC, I didn't know about Grass CC until Kwelimik pointed him out and I went to watch his video. Brilliant video. Brilliant video. He just casually, without having all the like scientific this and scientific that, just casually debunked all this rubbish. Very casually. So let's see. Magic Commander is going to win it. I'm just going to go ahead and go on to Kweli Mika because 
I think we've heard enough from uh, Worm Tongue here. I've heard enough from Worm Tongue. Uh, yeah. What do you guys think? Also, do uh, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's just go straight to um, Kualimika. Let's just go straight to brother, the brother Kualimika right now. Mika, I'm sick of him too. Yes, Major, I'm sick of him too. I'm sick of him too. All right. Okay. Let's watch our friend, our brother in arms. Let's go on to... And let's just let's just chill. Let's just chill and listen to um some proper sense. Okay. I said this on Friday. A lot of people that watch quite uh Metatron go around saying, Oh, you know, oh, he's debunked you Afrocentrist. They they've not listened. They've they have to be children. They have to be children or racists. I'm using that, that word again. I don't like to bring it out, but they're either children or racist, children just, or both, you know, just because Kwelimika does a very, very good and fair. Kwelimika actually plays more, more, gives more playtime to clips of Metatron. And Metatron's video is shorter, but you get more Metatron in Kwelimika's video than Metatron, than you get Kwelimika in Metatron's video. And there's like more content. There's more content time on Kwelimika's part. So I don't know how that works. He's very duplicitous. I know Kwelimika gave him a lot of space. He gave him a lot of um, leeway. And he said, you know, don't know if you're as clued up as you need to be. I don't know what your motives are. But we know what this guy's motives are. This is a, this is a disgusting person. This is a... In my opinion, in my humble opinion, this is a disgusting person. Um, there we go. Let's call him his, um takedown. This particular video. I'm guessing there'll be no copyright strike here because I'm just going to let this play for a long time with no commentary because this is beautiful. It's just beautiful. Okay, so let's play the first clip of the video. The question where the ancient Egyptians black is actually quite complicated, it's multi-layered. I'll try to bring as much clarity as possible in this video, as often the matter is rooted on a variety of political expectations, agendas, and the imposition of current perspectives and attitudes to depict and interpret past events in order to bend them in one. Is there anybody in the chat, is there anybody in the chat who, um, who actually hasn't seen Kweli Mika's um response that caused all this beef let me know as we go along because if you haven't i will try not to interrupt it 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 it's just it speaks for itself anyway i'm playing it now favor a cauldron of personal bias and lies on any sides of the spectrum so metatron starts by saying that the question is a complicated one and multi-layered yet he proceeds by making in my opinion a poorly researched video on a multi-layered issue as he himself stated his video claims to summarize a multi-centenary old debate in what 18 minutes this here is already an issue because this debate has taken place in scholarly circles several times with one He's not being a hypocrite here. Metatron on this topic um, was remiss because his video was less than 20 minutes. When Kweli Mika decided to tackle this for the first time, he gave it 43 minutes. That's almost triple the amount of time that, um, you know, that uh that mr scholar metatron gave it so 
and half of it was him using big words that he didn't know the meaning and speaking about things that you could easily find on the back of a cereal box. No, nothing, nothing massive, nothing to write home about. Side claiming Egypt was black and the other claiming it wasn't. Now, as in every argument, each side has reasons as to why they claim what they claim. Therefore, the critical mind that aims to summarize the debate shall represent both sides of the arguments properly and without bias to present a balanced and accurate picture of the debate for the viewer to judge. But as you will see in this video, Metatron fails to do this. His video actually exposes his bias against people who claim that ancient Egypt was black, as you will see shortly. Cleopatra. I think everybody has heard of her, but I don't know if you've heard that there is a group of people that say that she was black because she was the queen of Egypt. Egypt is in, you know, Africa. Therefore, she was the queen of Africa. She was African and she was black. And if you disagree, yes, you guessed it. Check this tweet out. I am not sorry to tell you all, but Rihanna definitely has that role owned. Gaga and AJ shouldn't have even been in the running. Honestly, if a black woman ain't playing Cleopatra, then nobody should play the African Egyptian queen Cleopatra, period. As you see here, Metatron goes to find a guy on Twitter that he is claiming extreme stuff that do not at all represent the arguments for a black Egypt. We know too well that by the time Cleopatra was queen of Egypt, the land known as Kemet, that is ancient Egypt's real name, was no longer. The guy on Twitter isn't a scholar, Metatron. There are scholars like Dr. Diop, Ivan Van Sertima, Chancellor Williams, Professor Henry Clark, and so many others that have books written on this topic and present argumentations in... We made this point on Friday. There are much better um, academics that Metatron could have started this debate with. He could have started by saying, right, we're going to debunk Sheikh Hansa Diop. We're going to debunk Rebecca Futo Kennedy. We're going to debunk a lady who I think is called Cara Cooney, uh, David Wengro. These are white people now. He could have said all of that. But no, he starts by debunking a random guy on Twitter talking about Cleopatra. Hmm. That's what Kualimika is saying right here. Talk about a straw man. Those books for a black African ancient Egypt. Why don't you address those arguments? This is hardly the way we do academic work. It's funny how you only choose to present such weak and extreme claims as the arguments for a black Egypt and somehow failed to include the very many works of scholars who argued that Egypt was a black African civilization. A quick search on Wikipedia will help you know the scholars that have spoken for and against this hypothesis, right? A quick search on Wikipedia. It's not that hard. You go on Google, you type ancient Egypt race controversy and boom, there, a full article with scholars agreeing that it was black and scholars agreeing that it wasn't. <clears throat> uh, anyhow. Build wealth by earning 5% interest on your pounds. Now you can with trading 212. I need to find the best way to learn math and science. <sighs> it's brilliant.org. Whoa. Brilliant has thousands of interactive no, lessons in no, math. No. Cleopatra came from a dynasty of conquering Greeks. Her ancestor was a general of Alexander the Great's army. She was born in Egypt, but she wasn't a native Egyptian. She was Greek, her father was from Cyprus, and therefore she didn't share the same phenotypic traits with the local population. All rulers from the Ptolemaic Kingdom in Egypt from 305 BC to 30 BC would have been Greek. We don't know exactly in details what she looked like. She was described as being very attractive and very intelligent, but we do know that she would have looked like a Southern European, a Greek of the time. Now, I happen to be a Southern European. I noticed the view, the people watching go rapidly down whenever, whenever Metatron's on. Um, bear, like, bear with me, guys. We, you know, he'll, we'll be done with this guy pretty soon, okay? And we'll just, I wanna, there's something I want to show you guys um, near the end. Um, that I, it, he's, he's, Metatron's not just doubling down. He's doing something that's very, very cunning, very, like, this is why I don't give him any, I don't personally give him any benefit of the doubt. I believe 
he's a duplicitous and dishonest person. Let's just be nice. You know, a duplicitous and dishonest person. But I'll show you that. Just bear with me whilst we have to stomach some more of his voice. So don't go anywhere, guys. I uh, just just bear in mind this is Kweli Mika debunking Metatron that you're watching right now. Ian, I'm from the Mediterranean. I'm Sicilian. I happen to be on the pale side. Maybe she looked like me. Maybe her skin would have been a bit more tanned, perhaps olive color. Still, she wouldn't have looked like a native African Egyptian. And we've got statues to show her hair and face structure and nose structure together with some coins. Again, clearly Greek. Yeah. Again, notice notice how much airtime um, Kwelimika gives Metatron. We're going to compare that in a second with how much airtime whether that's reciprocated from Metatron. You know, Kwelimik is not hiding at all. He's playing, he's giving sometimes up to uh, minutes of this guy to just talk. You know, I you'll see um, in Metatron's response to this video, he doesn't do anything like that. He takes little snippets, little, a few seconds, and chops them up and then he says right anyway yes cleopatra was greek and most very likely white now how do we know she was white dna no no just her statue and the land of origin of her ancestors and other ancient representations i personally find them very convincing and also notice how eager he is to say that her statue has greek phenotypes and thereby jump to the conclusion that she must have been white yet he fails to do so with the ancient egyptian wall paintings and statues throughout his video also, when Job and many others see and claim that the ancient Egyptian statues have African phenotypes, they start saying things like, uh, well, statues cannot be used to determine race. Yet, Metatron just used the statue to determine the race of Cleopatra. And they do the same with the Greeks. How do we know they were white? It's their statues mainly. They were like, oh, well, you know, they lived in Europe. And right now in Europe is white people. And look at their statues. They look just like white people today. So, right. <laughs> look, the double standard. There are countless ancient Egyptian statues that clearly depict African phenotypes. Artists will tell you that. But what do people say for ancient Egypt to prove the race, to show the race? They say we need DNA evidence. But for Cleopatra and the ancient Greeks, no need. Uh, the statue will suffice. Here is a quote from an artist who visited and drew the Sphinx of Giza. His name was Vivant de Non. He was a French artist who went to Egypt during the Napoleon invasion of Egypt. And he was asked to draw the Sphinx. And here is what he said. Though its proportions are colossal, the outline is pure and graceful. The expression of the head is mild, gracious and tranquil. The character is clearly African, but the mouth and lips of which are thick as most Negroes has a softness and delicacy of execution truly admirable. There is a link in the description if you want to find the original quote. The character is African, as he just stated there. The lips are thick. Clearly, one can tell race from a drawing or a sculpture, especially when one knows that the sculptures are accurate representations. Vivant de Nord is not the only one who noticed this. Several others did. Experts such as the Count de Volnay could not help but be astonished at the striking African phenotypes he saw on the Sphinx. Another one is Lepsius, who said, whenever we are looking for the Egyptians, we only find typical Negroes. No. <laughs> That means the Egyptians are Negroes, Depsius. That's what it means. Yeah. Artists who draw and sculpt will tell you that there are traits that distinguish the races. Okay, fantastic. But what about all of the other pharaohs? What about the actual general population, the Egyptians? What did they look like? To answer this professionally in the most accurate way possible, we have to examine Egyptian art, understand how they utilized color to represent themselves and their neighbors, and we'll address the term Kemet, the word the Egyptians used to refer to Egypt. We'll talk about an article that deals with the first successful genomic testing on ancient Egyptian mummies, where the mitochondrial genomes of 90 mummies were taken, and we'll discuss the results together. Okay, so now we know what he's addressing in his video, the art, the word Kemet, and the DNA evidence from the nature study. Good. The only way to answer this is to make sure that you and I both know what we mean exactly with the word black. And I've noticed that some academics these days love dancing around this one because it's controversial and they don't want to offend anyone. Okay, so what we've do they been do? through this. They say, oh, but the ancient... We've been through this. This is where he tries to claim that, you know, um, that black people can just be represented by... by... Um, 
by Maya Shali. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna get a little break there. I don't really want to see it. Oh, oh yeah. This is why I should have downloaded the um actor. I don't know if you watched the movie Green Book. Nice movie. Okay. So an American cool. actor. So most likely a descendant of the Niger Congo people. So Metatron right. seems to be playing into the blacks are only night. I wanna move on to something Kweli Mika says at the latter end of the video. Okay, let's, I'm just gonna, right, this is what Kweli Mika said, states about the genetic studies. I don't think Metatron actually addresses this in his video. Genomes and modern day genomes and found that the ancient Egyptian samples were further away from modern day Egyptians and closer to the modern day Near Easterners and Europeans. The scientists that performed these tests were extremely professional, but you can imagine that both Afrocentric groups and Eurocentric groups tried to use these and tackle these differently. Right. The study that everyone likes to brandish to show that the ancient Egyptians weren't black. <laughs> Lol. See Metatron, the study is indeed full of useful data that no one would deny. The only problems we have with that study are the conclusions. Does anyone notice what he tries to do there? So Metatron says, oh, Eurocentrists and Afrocentrists use this to claim. Eurocentrists use this to claim that um, it's, uh, they were Europeans. Yeah, but that's what the study said. The study said they had relations, um, a relationship with um, Levantine and European types. So, Europe, white supremacists are legitimate. They're right to be to say. They're right to say, hmm, okay, right. We got European Egyptians, but Metatron then tries to pretend like he's the balanced guy. Well, you, you can't do that. But you've just told us. You've just told us that the study shows a relationship with Middle Easterners and Europeans. So, of course, the white supremacists are going to be... But he has to now come back and pretend like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it neutral it's only, it's not really the Afro, it's not really like a study that proves the Egyptians were Europeans. What? But you've just said that. You've just said that's what the study shows. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back and play that for you guys. data together with both ancient genomes and modern day genomes and found that the ancient Egyptian samples were further away from modern day Egyptians and closer to the modern day Near Easterners and Europeans. The science. What? Did you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Scientists that performed these tests were extremely professional, but you can imagine that both Afrocentric groups and Eurocentric groups tried to use these and tackle these differently. Right. The study that everyone liked. I don't know if you guys caught that. That was a little sleight of hand there where he's trying to play the good guy, but really not. <laughs> to brandish to show that the ancient egyptians weren't black <laughs> lol see metatron the study is indeed full of useful data that no one would deny the only problems we have with that study are the conclusions they make based on their biased assumptions and the samples they used i debunked their conclusions and highlighted issues with the study in this video here please go check it out that's an what me what Kwelemik is talking about there, he's done a video. You guys need to go and see it if you've not seen it. Debunking that 2017 study that Metatron claims proves the Egyptians were Near Easterners slash Europeans. Check that video out. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And um, just whilst we're on it, um, right, if you stuck with me this long, Good, because you get to see a study 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Right, 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 right. Uh, Mayor J Commander says that was Western nonsense, but there is, here's the problem. I share DNA with JK2888. One of the mummies found and tested from Abu Surah Malik. I would love for him to explain that to me. Okay. Um, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, but let me show you this. Let me show you this. Okay. This is now... What would have been useful for Metatron to do instead of... Instead of going on about this um, weird study, this fake study that's been debunked by every serious person, it would have been better for him to show you this, right? This, what I'm about to show you, is a study based not on haplotypes. Kweli Miko explains this in his video on the genetics side of things. He explains to you that haplotype isn't particularly useful uh that genetic study was based on haplotypes i think and he explains that haplotypes isn't useful to determine the race particularly of a person genotype is what you need genotype and phenotype and there's studies lacking in genotype i wonder why okay but apart from that anthropological studies have been done Metatron could have easily found these anthropological studies, these studies based on limb structure, limb length, skull structure, which point more accurately to what race the Egyptians more likely were. Okay. So, we go to a Sonia Zakzrevsky article from 1996, I believe. It might be earlier than that, actually. I might be wrong. Sorry, I am wrong. We're talking an article from 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And Sonia Zakrzewski, Zakrzewski is right now currently, I think, at the University of Southampton in the United Kingdom. And in her paper... She uses a term that's not actually hers. It's from an earlier uh, study that shows that the Egyptians, in their limb proportions, in their skeletal density, in other uh, much more definable uh, parameters, were, quote-unquote, super-negroid. Now, that's only surprising if you buy any of the rubbish that these Metatron types say. Otherwise, it's not surprising at all. Here's what she says in her study. Um, let me put the screen back up for everybody. Okay, so we have... I don't know if everyone can see that. We have a quote here that says, okay, I think people can see it. The nature of the body plan was also investigated um, by comparing the intermembral, brachial, and crural indices for these samples which, with values obtained from the literature no significant differences were found in either index through time of either sex. Uh, the raw values in table 6 suggest that the Egyptians had the quote-unquote super negroid body plan described by Robbins' 1983 paper. I couldn't get my hands on that paper for you guys, but rest uh, assured that I will be able to get that for a future video i'm actually thinking of doing a video on this um on the papers that prove the 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 um blackness genetically speaking and and genotypically speaking of the egyptians uh but that's for the future uh but i couldn't get this robbins paper 
This Robbins paper from 1983 shows coins the term super negroid for the Egyptians after studying their body plans. The values for the brachial and cruel indices show that etc etc um, are long are relative to the proximal segments than in many African populations. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying there. Are longer, but the distal segments of each tip are longer relative to the proximal segments than many African, quote unquote. Um, right. Okay. Now let me take you. Whilst I was looking for, I was looking for the source for that quote, super negroid. That's a paper by Zaskrewski, which she corroborates, in which she corroborates another article from the 1980s that showed that the body proportions of the Egyptian mummies that were studied, they were, um, they were Negroid. Okay. All right. So let's go to, let's go to, so on my way, on my way to finding, to pinpointing, which I couldn't do on time, to pinpointing that 1983 study, I came across a study that was trying to, trying to, how do I say it? Trying to take some shine off the whole super Negro thing. But even that had to admit this. Let me show you what it had to admit. It had to admit this. It said this. Um, this is a study from 2008 in the American Journal of Physical Anthropology. 2008. The writers, the, the authors of this article are Ma Michelle Rackstar, Christopher Roth, Ayman Azab. There's a whole load of them. And they say this. Uh, this is what it says. In this article, our results confirm this is in the abstract. This is in the like the summary of the the whole paper. If you don't, if you don't want to read the whole thing, this is what it summarizes. It says our our results confirm that although ancient Egyptians are closer in body proportion to modern American blacks than they are to American whites, pause. Pause right there. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What? No, don't 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 gloss over that. Don't gloss over that and say although. No, no, no. Although nothing. Although nothing. Our results confirm that although ancient Egyptians are closer in body proportions to modern American blacks than they are to American whites. Proportions in blacks and Egyptians are not identical. Well, whoop-de-doo for you. Like, they don't need to be identical. You know, this article, if you read this article, I'll put all the links, post-fact, I'll put all the links um, to these important studies in the description so that um, people can go and read them themselves. The intent of this article was to kind of show that the 1983 article um, by Collins that showed that the Egyptians were super Negroid, this article is trying to say, mm, mm, you know, well, it's not really, we can't really be like sure. This article is trying to say, we can't really be sure. Okay, but even they had to say, our results confirm that ancient Egyptians are closer in body proportion to modern American blacks. Okay, and they go on to, you know, so they went, they started off trying to say, I think the article tried, sort of trying to say, let's not all like freak out over the Collins 1983 article that proves that the ancient Egyptians were black in body type. Let's not freak out over that. But they ended up concluding, okay, fine. Like, they couldn't actually debunk that article. So they just had to say, it's not identical. You can't use that 1983 article as a rule per se. But the body proportions of the ancient Egyptians are closer to black Americans. Which is what Collins 1983 said. 
super negroid. Now, how could that be? Hmm. Does Metatron have access to this? Easily. With his team and, and all of this rubbish he talks about. You know? Okay. Back to, um, back to Quelimika. Well, scientists join the dead data called the SNP data together with both ancient genomes and modern day genomes and found that the ancient Egyptian samples were further away from modern day Egyptians and closer to the modern day Near Easterners and Europeans. The scientists that performed these tests were extremely professional but... Sorry, sorry, I'm playing the wrong one. I'm playing the wrong one for you guys. Um, let me just find the right video. Scientific study is flowed, and I'm not the only person. <laughs> yes, Commander. <laughs> no, he doesn't have a team. I <laughs> think he has a team. <laughs> the guy does not have a team. What team? <laughs> and you know how we know he doesn't have a team? At the beginning of that video, um, the response to this video that we're watching well, it makes, it's like two seconds. It's a flash on the screen with like four names. And that's the last time we see that team on screen. Um, he... <laughs> um, anyway, whatever, whatever. Even if, even, if they, even if he has a team, whatever, man. Yeah, who cares? saying this there are many people out there who said this the main issue with it was the location of the samples they used those scientists took a bunch of mummies from one location in lower egypt and then went on to conclude that the entire population of all of ancient egyptian history resembled anatolians and that the sub-saharan gene flow came later probably through slavery <sighs> A very flawed conclusion of history, plus a pre-dynastic period that lasted about 2,000 years. So, how can you then conclude from one location that the whole population that you did not test on was the same as that one in that location? Especially the time period that the samples are from. Most of the samples used in the study are from the Ptolemaic period. Do you not know what happened when Alexander the Great conquered Egypt? He urged his soldiers, he urged his people to move to ancient Egypt, to mix in in the population, basically to take over the towns and cities. Here is Professor Christopher Eret, a linguist expert on the... We've already heard this, I'm going to skip. Okay, so Kuelimika just destroys Metatron there. Just completely destroyed. Done. Pooed all over him. Just pooed. Right all over this guy. You know, made a mess of him. Let's see what Metatron has to say for himself. Hmm? Let us see what Metatron had to say for himself. This is the video that we're all waiting on for a long time. We're all waiting on this. For a long time. All right. Okay. Let me just get the screen off for a minute. Mm. Okay. Right. Right. Let's let's go to um. Let's go to response to an Afrocentrist. Can we do that? Let's go to response to an Afrocentrist. This is the meat. This is what we spent three hours waiting for, really. This is the up to date. Um, this is the beef up to date. Okay. Uh, apologies, it's taking us this long. Um, oh, we're still on. <laughs> we are still on, Kushi. We're still on because I don't want to come back to this again. I reckon we got maybe 45 minutes left to go. There's not much there's not much to say, but 
let's just say it anyway. Let's just say what what little there is left to say for the record. Okay. Um, You went to the store, because you went to the store, and we're still on. Yeah, because we're having a good time. We're having a good time cooking. Destroyed me, my arguments, and my entire channel, along with all the studies and scholars whose work I reference to defend my position, claiming that my sources are, quote, Afrocentric, and according to his followers, All right, here we go. Here's um, here's Metatron. He's gonna defend. It. This is what we really came for. Okay, the beef up to date. They sounded like. They were playing games. They were like, oh, I'm undecided. Kweli Mika says a lot of rubbish. I don't know if you guys saw that, but um, no, 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 no detractors tonight. Internet's, for the most part, has been good and no hiccups, really. I did turn up late, but apart from that, we're good. So let's pair Metatron. Let's say we all waited. We waited about... How long did we wait for this re this response? He ignored him. But you know that he saw this video. He saw this video and he waited until um he waited until he like could get his team together. That team. All right, let's see what he had to say. <laughs> Hello, noble ones. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking, and for today's intro. Right, come on, let's get, let's go in here. Let's go with um. Let's get this up on the screen. Let's get up on the screen. Can you guys see what's on my screen? Let me know if you can see what's on my screen, please. Um. One, if you can see what's on my screen. Just one. I just need one person to type one. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. Thank. Thank you, Maj. Thank you. All right. Let's play. I only have a sentence for you. Brace for impact. Is this guy cringe? <laughs> Is this, is, okay, all right. <laughs> so what is the premise of this case? About a year ago, I published a video titled Were the Ancient Egyptians Black? The Truth. The video had excellent views, and I appreciate you, noble ones, for giving this video the success I believe it deserved. Your trust is not misplaced. A short time after its publication, the channel Kweli Mika, a channel entirely dedicated to Afrocentricity, responded with a debunking video. There are several factors that influence whether I decide to enter a debate publicly or not. Now, he qualified because... Okay, so... He starts the thing by saying, a channel entirely devoted to Afrocentricity. We all know that term is loaded. You know, it didn't start off loaded. It started off as people trying to reclaim African history. But we know that term's loaded. Metatron says, a channel... Entirely devoted to Afrocentricity, as if it's a disc, which it is. That's what he's trying to say. This guy is not trustworthy. He's just trying to steal people's history. We know the dog whistle there. He's trying to steal other people's history, right? Kweli Mika calls him out for this. He says, why would you do that? Uh, don't believe me. Go and watch Kweli Mika's response to this video. Why would you actually do that? That's you've already within like seconds, under a minute into the video, you've seen it in your audience's mind a bias against my well researched video. Okay? And you claim you've come here to debate, to make a scholarly debate, right? 
but you've started by saying Afrocentricity. Do you know what this weasel does in 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 response? He goes round to other people's channels. So we've got okay, right. Um, Grassy C did a video. Hmm. Grassy C did a video and. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah, he was hurt. RJ McKenzie, he was hurt. Very hurt. Badly hurt. Badly, badly hurt. No. Sorry, guys. Um, oh, sugar. Right, right. Let's see if I can find this for you guys. I took a screenshot of this. Right, here we go. I found it. Finally found it. Nope, not this one. Where's it gone to? There we go. There we go. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Uh, it's not on the point of Afrocentr Afrocentricity. Um, when Metatron is confronted about certain use of language... This is what he does. So, I think on the video, I think this is on the video done by Grassy C. Not sure. But, um, let me show you this. Okay, here you go. Metatron. So, Kweli Mika does a response to this video in which he says, why are you using racist terms? Terms that we no longer accept in academic circles because we, we, we've we come across their problematic um, angles and we don't we just don't like to use that. And um, Titan Blooded 622 says, Metatron, Hamito-Semitic? Hard to take your argument seriously when you're prompting, promoting racist concepts or while accusing someone else of being racist. Shameful. Okay, who did I accuse of being racist, says Metatron. And if I use obsolete terminology, keep in mind, I think I won't say Oriental, just because in Italian we say Oriental and has zero racist connotations. It was pointed out to me that in... Oh! Oh, right, Metatron. When you're, when you're um, cornered about your use of racist terminology that has sort of racist connotations, it's no hables inglés. No, no, no hables inglés. No, 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 me, no. Me, oh, no comprende. <laughs> so, so all of us, so you, you watch this video. I'm going to play his video again. And he's using words after words that, you know, even as a native English speaker, you have to kind of pause and be like, okay, what does that, what's that actually say? So speaking English? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then when somebody says, dude, why are you using that term? Why are you using that phrase? Oh, oh, well, I, I, I'm not speaking in my first language. I, 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 no, I bless English. It's like, <laughs> this guy, this is one of the most disgusting. All right, I've said that word enough times. I said I'd be charitable. Let's go back to our friend. Let's go back to what he's saying. Okay. There we go. He brings forth some decent points. He's clearly educated and he doesn't call me a racist. So, Quilimika, I commend you for that. With that being said, he does accuse me of this. 
we're going to expose the lack of rigor and intellectual integrity in the research of the Metatron's video on ancient Egypt. To stop misleading people and do more research, please. I doubt that he did proper research for his video. Joke's on you, man. Joke's on you, Metatron. <laughs> Which I don't take lightly. At the end of the day, a public debate can be a great opportunity for systematic reflection, which is always welcome, and it can also be mutually constitutive. With that being said, this conversation will happen based on these parameters. Any point of agreement will have to be ontological, factual, and documented. I would like to be... What does that even mean? Well, a minute and 30 seconds into this video, and he's used ontological. Why? factual documented who wants to talk about stuff that's not factual who wants to talk about stuff that's not documented who i don't i don't i, I mean quentin Miki did a 45 minute video i don't know that he was talking about stuff that's not undocumented so why preface it with, as if he's talking to a child this is is it's just it's filler is filler so does he even know the what he means by ontological i doubt he does this is we're gonna have to skip lots of this video uh because it's getting late for a lot of you guys um out there in the states and in canada wherever you're listening for for me it's certainly late and i got a lot to do in the morning um so this is a massive this video for me i didn't actually i didn't actually watch this video to the end until i had to do prep for this live just so i just so i could say i've watched him i've seen i couldn't stand it i couldn't stand i watched about 15 minutes and i thought okay this is ridiculous now you're not saying anything you're actually not saying anything you're just using words you probably don't know the meaning of you little italian man charitable charitable come on come on not a direct attack to him however when i do enter a debate i fully enter a debate and i take it very seriously so i didn't just watch his video response i watched and analyzed every single video on his entire channel with my full team including two linguists one archaeologist one egyptologist a published historian and anthropologist phd i've also identified several rhetorical devices that he uses on his video response to me in order to be more persuasive these do not constitute honest discourse hence every time he uses one i will point it out and call it out within his audience he has people who are interested in historical truth i have no quarrel with them whatsoever but he also has people who are in utter rebellion against external factual reality and have attacked me personally mostly based on me having white what was the need for that you what was the need for the use of the word external external factual reality so we have the word reality why does reality have to be factual? <laughs> is, is it, isn't the very point of reality that it's factual? It's real. But he says factual reality. And then he says external factual reality. <laughs> What's he talking about? You guys... <laughs> I never seen a I never seen a reality that's not factual. <laughs> I've never seen a reality that's internal. <laughs> That's factual, and then that's internal. What is he talking? This guy. This. <laughs> okay, let's play this guy. I'm not. I can't. We can't watch the whole thing. We just can't. This is. This is the. This is the beatdown that um we supposedly received skin as evidenced by the comment section of my original video. Regardless of all the attacks that I've received on my original video due to his response, I have not disabled the comment section because freedom of speech. But these are clear attempts at manipulation meant to shut down valid criticism or opposing views. This is clearly out of his control, so I encourage my subscribers to not retaliate to that. Skin tone does not matter. Let's attack arguments only, and boy. Okay, thanks for thanks for the, yeah. God, thank you for this lecture, Metatron. Like two minutes forty two two seconds. What are you talking about? And your video is still shorter than Quelly Mika's. It's thirty five minutes exactly. Quelly Mika's response to this was forty three minutes and something. So, 
Dude, you still said nothing. And okay, let's go. Let's go. Am I in full assault mode today? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard someone say. I heard someone say, um, Kweli Mika could be a bot in his, um, In his um, if you sell courses or coaching, section, you need this. I heard somebody book say, I have compiled "Oh, Kweli Mika could actually be a bot." Pages. The this guy got frameworks and this, systems I use with this, my um, webinars his to generate twenty-five uh, million dollars in sales. Um, Metatron says, "Oh, Let's see my computer's." This is what we. Okay, this guy says. Am I in full assault mode? That's a bot. That's a bot talking. Let's listen to him again. Not matter. Let's attack arguments only. And boy, am I in full assault mode today. What? Am I in full assault mode today? What? I, I, what? <laughs> talking about bot. This is what we are disagreeing about. My point. Ancient Egypt was a multicultural and multi-ethnic civilization due to its geolocation connecting the Middle East, Africa, Asia and Europe. A strategic location on the crossroad of continents, flourishing around the Nile River, which was a cultural conduit of civilization. Therefore, there is diversity on the skin of the Egyptians. Throughout time and location, the ethnic percentages... Metatron might be AI, you know. We might be fighting someone who's AI here will vary depending on era and region. According to the results of my research, the majority of ancient Egyptians would have had an olive skin, with a lower percentage of black individuals living mostly in the southern areas of Egypt, and some white settlers and white ruling elite during the later periods. The ancient Egyptians were a multi-ethnic African civilization, and their ethnicity was inextricably tied to their geographic location. Your point. Ancient Egypt was originally founded by one indigenous black African culture, namely the Nakta culture from down South Africa, and the other Eurasian ethnic groups joined in later and constituted a minority. You Wait, someone said muted. Is it still, is it muted? Can you guys hear it? Just let me know, can you hear it now? Okay, I think you can, I think you can in fact make fun of the Egypt was a multi-ethnic society argument. So to you, the ancient Egyptians were predominantly black. My goal is to defend objective reality. Your goal seems to want to rectify the current understanding of African history okay, and culture. You. The two would not be necessarily mutually exclusive unless bias enters the picture. And talking about bias. Okay, so he's about to tell us He's about that's okay, Kushi. Uh, it's about to he's about to tell us that um about bias now. Right. Four minutes in, and we're almost at five minutes in. This is one seventh almost of this video, and he's about to tell us about bias. Okay, let's listen. We're going to expose the lack of rigor and intellectual integrity in the research of the Metatron's video on ancient Egypt. Be that as it may, I respect the fact you have the freedom to think that, but you'll need more than a constant repetition of this statement in order to foster such advances. So let's identify the issue. Intellectual rigor is the ability to make well-researched arguments that are supported by logic and evidence. Clearly, the presence of a strong bias will work against this objective. Do you concur? Now, I... Yes, we concur. Again, no hables ingles, me cameto fermetico, I don't know. But do you concur? Why didn't you say, do you agree? Well, like, God, dude. I have nothing against an honest and critical introspection, but you're accusing me of lacking intellectual rigor. And then the content I produced on this topic was not based on carefully considered deep empirical studies based on consistent data analysis, which it was, but that it was rather a... I think he's trying to, um, I think that's what you're doing. I, I, listen, I, I did law, I, I, I did law at university. That was my um, field. And I had to read some 
disgustingly dry books. And you could sum up the argument of some of these books in, in I don't know, in a 1,000 word essay a lot of the time. I'm not even joking. You had books that were about 600 pages long that we had to read. And you could sum up the arguments made in them in a thousand words, A4 piece of paper. And that would be that. But what you tended to get was just long ass, interminable, just twisty, like chapters about nothing. Probably it's like to get a grant or something. I don't know. Just to say I have a book out there. That's what this guy's doing. He's got nothing, but he's using words like empirical and con like just ontological. And why? Shoddy research born of a strong bias, which according to you I have. So this is an exercise in certainty, isn't it? So bias being the key word here. Are you sure you want to use that one, Quilimika? Now let me show the viewer why you are standing on very weak ground with this accusation of bias. Clearly our audiences cannot read our minds, so how can they determine who is the biased one here? Well, Let's discuss the consequences of admitting fault when it comes to the research of our videos. When it comes to my channel I cover a wide range of topics, ancient Egypt being a very marginal one. If evidence is presented to counter my arguments it would not hurt my channel nor my public image one bit if I had to admit fault due to new overwhelming evidence I yes it would if you go on if you go on metatron's channel now like in the last year i don't know i don't know what the estimate would be but a considerably high ratio of his videos in recent in the recent in the past year or two is devoted to debunking you know woke history rewritings that's all. That's what he do, and I wouldn't be surprised if, in the near future, that's all his channel does. It, you know, no more um, uh, sword like little. He very uh, when he started on. If you go to the, his oldest videos, it was gaming and swords and little childish crap. Um, but and then he did the whole swords and Romans and knights things for years. Now he's kind of going it's coming thick and fast these videos that he does on oh another roman black person as if there were never any black people in rome as if as if it doesn't go both ways black people can't travel to rome white people can mediterranean types can sail across to africa and be in egypt and be in these black spaces but black people can't travel there and oh oh we now all need to freak out every time netflix does a show with a roman black soldier oh oh my goodness let me let me let me get my let me get my um let me get my pen out and write a script for this video where i'm gonna debunk this black oh and you're you're not racist you've not got a prejudice so of course it would hurt you because you're you've amassed quite a considerable amount of people one of his like biggest hits is the video he did originally the 18 minute video that we spent however long looking at at the beginning it's almost got a million views so it's clearly drawing in the views and subscribers so yes you do have quite a bit to lose if you look like if you look stupid on this topic it's a complete non-starter. This man, I'm telling you now, Kweli Mika and others stop needing to... They, we, I think we're too kind. <laughs> we're too kind. We just need to call him out for what he is. He's completely duplicitous. And my channel, for one, is not going to pretend like... You know, it's not going to pretend like... I give people benefit of the doubt. I, be, I, I, I believe in that. But when someone tells you who they are... You, you'd be really foolish, in my opinion, to pretend, you know, to say, oh, no, no, you need to believe him. This man is showing us who he really is, okay? He says that he has nothing to lose, but your channel is based, in recent times, it's based on debunking people like Kweli Mika. 
you're getting your most views regularly from this kind of content. So yes, you do have something to lose. And you know that. I know that because I have admitted fault in the past. You, on the other hand, have an entire channel based on ancient Egypt being black. So during this debate, if you admit you were wrong, your entire channel will cease to exist. Differently from me, you have a lot at stake here. So given the stakes, who is... No. Let me show you guys something. It's not... <laughs> yes, Kweli Mika has a channel particularly particularly yes devoted okay fine say solely devoted to the africanicity to the blackness of ancient egypt but that is f with a good cause why kwelimik is not the only person saying that um we need to put egypt back in africa he's not the only person saying that let me show you this um, and he's not just the only person um, saying it. He's also, hmm, how do I put this? He's also, um, he's also in good company. He's in white company, you might say. He's in white company because there are white people. Metatron knows this. I, I, I believe he knows this. Let me rephrase. I believe he knows this. Okay. There are white academics saying this. There have been white academics. Google Basil Davidson, uh, a journalist of many years who I've used this quote at the beginning of a video before where he says they had to take Egypt, a white man, a white Englishman said they had to take Egypt out of Africa because it messed too much with their psyche. The fact that we've, we've lied about these people for so long. Look at what they're capable of. So now that we've done that, we've got to circle back and clean up our tracks all along the way. And every time we show a movie of ancient Egypt, we've got to make sure they see Mediterranean whites, Mediterranean whites, olive, 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 olive. Basil Davidson says that. You can find the quote. Um, and here are, two, here, are, here are white people saying exactly this thing. You've got the first person. I'm going to put the scr the, my screen back up. So Metatron, if you want to come for uh, Kweli Mika on this topic, you also have to come for white people. White people um, who are saying, who are staking their careers on the fact that ancient Egypt was black. They're coming, they're, they're being a bit braver these days because of the work that we are doing. We're not, we're not willing to let other people tell our history anymore. We are getting bolder and saying, you know what? F you, you're liars. This is what was happening. This is this is how it was. This is the story. This is our story. And you can call us all the names you want. Afrocentric. This it doesn't matter. I don't. We don't care. You've got your history. Your your history puffs you up from the Greeks to the British Empire. It gives you an identity. It gives you something a reference point. But you want to call me names the minute I come from my history. No f you. Call me all the names you want. And matter of fact, yes, we're coming for Greece too. We're coming for Babylon. We're coming for all of that. Because all of that had roots in blackness, had roots in black history as well. So I don't even blame people saying the Greeks were black at this point. I don't blame them. We're coming for it all because you were done with your lies. We're done with your gaslighting. And these are, these. I'm going to play for you now, white people saying that this is all wrong, we need to go back to the truth, which is Egypt was a black African place, was a black African civilization built by black Africans. So what's Metatron got to say to these guys? Are they biased as well? Or have they built their careers on a lie? talk 
talked about um, what, what everyone's been discussing right now, which is racism and um, quiet, insidious, um, unseen racism and racism where we all live and work. And you guys know I'm an Egyptologist. <laughs> so that means I study um, people of Africa and I am not of African descent myself, except don't forget, we got that genetic test with the with the 5%. So woohoo, um, though I did not know it until a year ago. And I wanna talk about um, racism within Egyptology. And I have talked about this in this, um, uh, Facebook, YouTube context before, and I have done so on my own, and I've done so with uh, Dr. Jonathan Winterman of UCLA. And we think about these things a lot. We talk about it a lot. Um, Jonathan comes from the Oriental Institute at the University of Chicago. That's where he was trained. I was trained at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, um, known as the, the Institute of, of Albright and um, an ancient Near Eastern powerhouse. And just these names, um, the ancient Near East, um, the Oriental Institute, just these names uh, smack of racism within our line of work, our academy. Um, um, if you took an ancient Egyptian uh, and put him or her into Alabama in 1954, they would have had to sit at the back of the bus. So if you're asking, were the ancient Egyptians black? My answer is yes. There you go. Kara Cooney. I hope I'm saying her name properly. Kara Kara Cooney. If you're asking me whether the Egyptians black, were the ancient Egyptians black, the answer is yes. They wouldn't get no, they wouldn't get, they wouldn't have got a space on the bus in Alabama back in the 60s. Yes, they were black. That's what she says. So, hmm, if if when this live is done, I hope someone sends this and time stamps it to Metatron. I don't really, I, I, not for any other thing other than, what have you got to say to Kara Cooney? What have you got to say to Stuart Tyson Smith, I think it is? What have you got to say to this woman coming up? Listen to this woman coming up. Commit expert, Dr. Sally. And Ashton is here on the line, and she's going to talk to us about different stance on ancient Egypt than most Egyptologists do. You're about to hear somebody with Egyptology credentials from Cambridge, from anyway. Just I'll let her play. I'll shut up. Um, and it's you. You kind of guys. You guys stand by the African origins with which with a lot of quote unquote Afrocentric, so to speak. Have you gotten any flat for that? that stance you've taken? Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I was really quite fortunate when I, I, I left Egyptology formally in 2015 um, to retrain as a psychologist because my research interests had changed and I got really quite tired, really, of the discipline. Um, I felt that it was kind of stuck in the past and, and I didn't agree with the way that it was often presented. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think really when I started to um, put materials online, um, which is at the Fitzwilliam Museum where I was um, a curator um, for 12 years, it was at that point where I started getting sort of people emailing me, emailing my institution, um, sort of even in some cases threatening me um, because of what I was saying, saying that what I was doing was dangerous, um, that it was... And, I think initially I was actually very shocked um, because, first of all, you know, I, I'm not saying that I, I know everything, you know, no academic can. We, we all have areas to specialize in and we're always constantly learning. But to have people completely dismiss the fact that I was working as a professional Egyptologist at the University of Cambridge, that I had a PhD in Egyptology, um, simply on the basis that, that they knew that they were correct. And, and I think, you know, I understand more about that kind of behavior now as a psychologist. Um, and I obviously understand that um, there's obviously an agenda here, which... Anyway, that's Dr. Sally Ann Ashton. She doesn't, she's not focusing on Egyptology currently. Um, she's kind of just got tired of it, um, of the racism involved and the denialism, just denial. So what's she done? She's gone onto another field. Um, but that's okay. Like Mejay Commander says, you know, we'll say strong. We, we will say strong. 
Yeah, yeah. Cushy, Cushy's right. Doctor Cushy, uh, the the Cushy will give you doctor as well. Um, Doctor Cushy says, um, "I always thought she was run out of Egyptology. Now she admits it. Yeah, that's exactly what she's saying there. Yeah, she did go hard." Medjay Commander says, Dr. Sally Ann Ashton went hard in the field for many years. And I think she just got tired of... It's not the trolls. It's not. I don't think it's the trolls. I think she's trying there to say it without saying it because, um, you know, these are professional people. But her colleagues, you know, her colleagues will have the blinkers on and she probably fighting against them constantly. She probably saw things and she was like, you you know that's a big deal, right? We should write an article about that. We should do a study on that to show how, like, you know, these folks were black people. And she'd probably get back, what are you talking about? Just a gaslight. What are you talking about? Oh, come on, Sally. That kind of thing. And, and um, she just got tired of it, you know? So, and she left. So... <sighs> I hope she comes back because we need people like her. Uh, we need people like her. So here, here we go. Let's finish off. Uh, let's finish listening to this doofus. Who's more likely to be intellectually dishonest here? Me or you? Just as a matter of deductive logic, it is an absolute no-brainer to recognize the fact that repercussions may increase an individual's proclivity to certain types of bias. Are your eyes diverted away from factual truth because of a conflict of interest? On top of that, if one were to look at your channel banner, well, you did go out of your way to take the entirety of planet Earth and turn it around just so you could put Africa on top of Europe. This man is... This man is, um, I think um, Cushy used the word recently. I'm not even using this as an insult. This man is either stupid. No, he's stupid. He, I know he doesn't. I know he's actually ignorant here. He's very stupid. He's just falling right into a big vat of excrement. In in this part of the video, he's falling into his own mess. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure whether Kweli Mika po picked it up in his response to this. But this guy says, oh, you've turned Africa upside down. That shows your bias. No, <laughs> it's a reference to the fact that the Egyptians saw their civilization as originating up. So if you go um, up the Nile, which is south, that's why it's upper Egypt, because you're going up the Nile, which comes from the blue now. It comes from Ethiopia. You're going down deep, deep into Ethiopia when you get when you get the source of the Nile, which is the longest river in the world. It crosses several countries today. Cross it goes into we're talking into Uganda, right? Like <laughs> I think so anyway. And the Egyptians constantly were aware of this in their legends. Listen to um what an old Egyptologist had to say. Um, one of the founders of Egyptology, he says, um, here we go. Edouard Naville, Frenchman, Edouard Naville. Okay, he says this. I've to put the screen back on. If we consult Egyptian inscriptions, we find that without any exception, the South is always what comes first. The North is never spoken of as an ancient resort from which the population should have issued. The South has always the preeminence over the North. The kings of the South were mentioned before the, those of the North. The usual name for king properly means king of the South. That's the term that Kweli Mika um, references in his video um, in his response to this video by this fool, um, he says, um, and you know, I don't care. I don't care if this ever, by chance, gets to um, Metatron. I don't care because you deserve it. You absolutely you deserve even worse, really. The kings of the south, Metatron says, Nesut, Nesut. Okay, that's, that's the term that they would use um, to refer to 
they're pharaohs, really. Pharaoh was some, it's just something we use, but really the word was Nesut, which meant king of the south. So even in that title itself, if you were king of the south, you were king of the whole of Egypt. That itself references the fact that they saw their civilization coming from up the Nile. So when they looked at the world, the beginning, the up was south, if that makes sense. That's why, and Kwelemika has, re, he's spoken about this in his channel videos. He's spoken about this before. <laughs> so, and another thing that Metatron claims is that he's watched all the videos that have met of Kwelemika with his team. Well, if you have, you'd have found, you, if you, now, now you, now you're sounding like a liar. Because if you actually had, you'd know. That this is what Kwelemika is referencing when he talks about the map upside down. But to his viewers now, oh, that's a point. Oh, Metatron has scored a point. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah. You turn that map upside down, you Afrocentrist. Yeah, man. Yeah. You get him, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's embarrassing. It's actually embarrassing. I cringed. I almost died of cringe watching, watching this guy with his with his weirdo self. Alright, let's go back to what he's saying. That doesn't exactly fill me with confidence when it comes to your supposed lack of bias. So there is that. So as someone who cares about our history, the expression our history is a massive red flag for me, as I have explained on this dedicated video. With this choice of words, you seem to be claiming ethnic exclusivity over the history and culture of an entire continent just based on the color of your skin. Now, <laughs> so so a white person talking about Europe can't can't claim exclusivity over the continent of Europe by can't say our history. A white person can't say our history when he's talking about Europe. Is that's what that's what this um this thing is um is claiming this AI guy this badly done AI job. On your video, you did not call me a racist. So I'll return the favor and give you the benefit of the doubt. Also, because reading negative intent in an otherwise ambiguous situation is not exactly, shall we say, my style. But if you are in fact going down that road, then let me say this: Egypt faces the Mediterranean. I am Mediterranean. My sea, my history too. <laughs> so, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let me mute this. I don't want this advert to play. Um, uh. All right, so... <laughs> Okay, so Egypt faces the Mediterranean. My sea. Metatron My starts sea. by saying. Okay, All right. Nigeria faces the Atlantic. My sea. Um, uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, America faces the Atlantic, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, my sea as a Nigerian man. My history. America's my history, guys. America's history is my history. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Um, India faces the Indian Ocean. This is an Ethiopian speaking now, or Kenyan. My sea, my history. I'm Indian. <laughs> this, this man. You can do it with any continent. You can do it with any country on any continent. My she, my history. This month. Yeah, the question is a complicated one and multi layered. His video claims to summarize a multi centenary old debate in what, 18 minutes? This here is already an issue. The problem alluded to by Kwelimika here is that since I admitted that Egypt and its ethnicity is a complex and multi layered topic, then the fact that my video was only 18 minutes long is somehow an attack on my credibility. Having chosen this point of critique, surely if we were to look at his channel, all of his videos when dealing with complex topics would have to be extremely long, right? 
The African origins of humanity sounds like a pretty deep and multi-layered topic right there. Oh, 8 minutes and 20 seconds. African origins of astronomy, this one must be... No, no, no. This is a young channel. You go back and look at all of uh, Metatron's uh, early videos. Almost all of them are in the same time range as these. This is a young channel trying to get off the ground. Doesn't have the time and resources you do. So you will get some short some short videos there at the beginning. Uh, when Me when Quellimika decided to delve into this topic as per your video, he went into it to, f to the length of 43 minutes. When he responded to this rubbish video of yours of 35 minutes, I think Quellimika's response to this video is an hour over. It's over an hour. So as it comes to this topic, per se, this controversy, Kweli Mika is not a hypocrite. You are. One hour long, right? 11 minutes 33. Was Ramses the second black? 20 minutes topic? Two minutes and eight seconds. Are you sure you want to use that against me? Three minutes? Yes, we are. Press one if you if you're gonna use that against him. Still, press one. And it's shocking truth. This is the first deceptive indicator within your speech pattern. Called out. You have a clear double standard at play here. Therefore, I call this point of attack indefendable. As you see here, meta. Yeah, well, I just defended it. Metatron goes to find a guy on Twitter that he is claiming extreme stuff that do not at all represent the arguments for a black Egypt. This one hasn't aged well, has it? You said that me pointing out a random guy believing that Cleopatra should be black was pointless because, I mean, nobody believes that. And then this happened. When did, when, when did Kwelemika said nobody believes that? Kwelemika's point is that it's redundant. It's not... If you're going to start an academic debate, a scholarly debate, don't start with people who don't know what they're talking about. Don't start with random people on the internet. Start with the credible claims of a black Egypt. Metatron's clever enough to know what uh, Quelimika was saying by that. So, what are, we, what are we left to believe here? That Metatron doesn't understand that point? Or Metatron hasn't a shred of integrity in him to be able to say, oh, okay, do you know what? Fair enough. I went for the low-hanging fruit there. I shouldn't have done. It was an easy thing to do. We all do that. We can all do that. You know, it was an easy thing to do. I shouldn't have really have done it. But point taken, let me now debunk your Afrocentric academics. But he doesn't even have the dignity. He doesn't. He, this guy doesn't even have the integrity to say, okay, to hold his hand up for that. He has to pretend like, oh, look, look, Jada Pinkett Smith made a thing about oh, uh, Cleopatra. See? Nah, come on. Well, you clearly didn't see that one coming. I did. You ridiculed me. For bringing up this whole Cleopatra was black point? Joke's on you, man. Remember, noble ones, not everything that sounds persuasive constitutes a valid point of argument. Yes, Egypt is in Africa. Thank you for acknowledging a fact. <laughs> on this point, we are in alignment. A quick search on Wikipedia will help you know the scholars that have spoken for and against this hypothesis. A quick search on Wikipedia. It's not that hard. <sighs> uh, anyhow. This is a subtle conversation trick. Well, it's such an easy thing to do, just look it up on Wikipedia, but you couldn't even do that. Well, first of all, it's a non-argument. I do not use Wikipedia, Quelimika. And to be honest, neither should you. At least... Quelimika wasn't saying use Wikipedia, he was saying a perfunctory look, a casual look on Wikipedia will show you, will give you an entry-level crash course into the who's who of this debate, the academics that you can go to who stand firmly ten toes down on the Africanicity, the black Africanicity of ancient Egypt. 
He's not. He's arguing out of absurdity. Easy. Again, does Metatron not understand this? You bet he does. But now we're going to get a, a lecture about not using Wikipedia. If you want any academic value to your work. Also, could this be another case of double? And we know uh, Metatron has used Wikipedia before. It's, there's no way, on a, prob on a balance of probability, in my opinion, there's no way that he's never used Wikipedia in any of his presentations. So this speech about uh, the the dangers and the um, let's 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 look for a big word. The um, hmm, let's let's match let's match Metatron's the pitfalls, the negative ramifications, the rambunctious <sighs> idiot. Standards at play here? Let's see if he has ever mentioned Wikipedia negatively. On his video about the African origin of astronomy on minute two, 37 seconds in, he absolutely seems to be agreeing with me on this point. With online encyclopedia, Wikipedia fails to mention Naptoplaya in its article. Of <sighs> We're just going to skip because that wasn't. No, this is in fact. That wasn't Quelimika's point anyway, so it's redundant. We're just going to skip. Now I'm going to get an advert. Think this guy is worried about malware? Don't bet on it. Whether it's malicious software such as ransomware or other unauthorized. And it's on mute. This is in fact your weakest point. How can I put it? You are, let's be generous, catastrophically mistaken here. Allow me to elaborate. There isn't only one verse that can completely debunk this point of yours. There is a whole... This is, this is the strongest it gets. We are 10 minutes into this video and Metatron has played second long snippets here and there of Quelimika's debunking of him. Um, completely misrepresented him. For the most part, used word salad after word salad um to tell us the most mundane things um and we are now coming to what what's 11 out of 35 that would be about oof, i don't know <sighs> we're coming to about a third or quarter of this video and um he's just about to get into um an actual argument which when we go into it actually isn't one. Let's have a look. Cluster of passages, a veritable cornucopia, which I'll report here <laughs> one by one. Furthermore, your linguistic approach within the realm of translation contains significant methodological flaws. And just like the majority of Afrocentric scholars, you omit passages that contradict your statements. Any methodology needs to be pragmatic because the linguistic categories both did you guys see that? Did you see the green come up? I'm telling you, this guy is AI. This man, I might even be getting worked up over somebody that's not real. They, uh, there was a green right. Okay. On from any analysis are clearly developed in line with the research questions, with a constant overlap between theory and empirical data. As the basic structure of our linguistic research and interpretation, what we did as a team is that first we established the genre and discourse of the text in question, also trying to... No, he's reading the script, he's reading the thing of the thing. He said, this is important for later on. First, they established the genre of, this, of the text being discussed, okay? Um, right. Sample for other ethnographic information. Then we try to locate similar text with similar topics. Beginning. He's reading this stuff. He's re this man is reading what he's saying. He does not understand a word. This little man does not. This gremlin does not understand a word of what he's saying. You can see his eyes darting to and fro from the scripts that his team, quote, his team has given him. Kualimik has done a video in which he actually, I think he points out that he's probably taking a lot of this from this racist woman's, um, uh, this potentially, possibly, um, perhaps racist woman's um, blog. Uh, he doesn't know what he's on about. 
With a systematic analysis of lexical resources and lexical syntactic features of text, we move through a systemic function data analysis of genre and text metafunction. In your linguistic section, you did none. Concurrently. None of what? None of the made-up words, the, the, the stupid words that you've spoken about. When dealing with or using ancient Greek or even classical Latin vocabulary, you do not deal with absolutes. This is an absolute here. So let's address the word unanimously that you have chosen. Whenever we wish to use the words of the ancients, for example, the ancient Greeks, we need to remember that in order to do it professionally, well, every written or spoken word produced in the ancient texts is a discursive event and therefore needs to be placed in its correct cultural context, since language and culture are inherently intertwined. Moreover, the historical context needs to also be analyzed and integrated within the interpretation. With that in mind, let's now talk about the word Ethiopian in ancient Greek text. The original Greek word derives from the word I burn, plus the word face. So literally, it means burnt face. It occasionally... Uh, this is very debatable, okay? I used to roll with this. This, if you've not, if you've been dipping in and out, please pay attention now. I will show you that there's potential... Um, there's potential for this word to have been... Um, the real meaning of this word to have been lost over time. Okay, right. Let me show you something quickly. Um, okay. This word Ethiopian might actually, in its original sense, be referring to a people who the Greeks revered in the sense that their faces were the color of the universe the essence that made up the universe so i'll turn the screen back on ether if you can see that ether classical element which is the first part of ethiopian that's where we get the word ether you know the ether it's in the ether According to ancient and medieval sources, ether, alternative spellings include ether, e ether, and ether, ether. Also known as the fifth element or quintessence is the material that fills the region of the universe beyond the terrestrial sphere. So that would be space. That would be the heavens at night with the stars. The concept of ether was used in several theories to explain several natural phenomena such as the propagation of light and gravity, etc. Let's skip that bit. That's, that's talking about the context in, in more recent times. Mythological origins. The word ether, ether in Homeric Greek means pure, fresh air or clear sky. In Greek mythology, it was thought to be the pure essence that the gods breathed, filling the space which they lived. Analogous to analogous to the air breathed by mortals. It is also personified by a deity, Aether, son of Erebus and Nyx in Greek mythology. Also, Aether is related to incinerate and intransitive to burn, to shine. Um, see Ethiopia, meaning people with burnt black visage. The first time I came across this as an alternative interpretation for ethiopians was in a forum somewhere and i couldn't i at first i was skeptical but i'm more inclined now to believe that in its original state the greeks were talking about people with a face as black as the universe itself the universe at night time as 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 they could observe over time obviously that also um that translated into um, incinerate. Words can take up different meanings as time goes on. And that wasn't, the ancient Greeks weren't immune to that either. The ancient Greeks weren't immune to their words. English, we've got words in English that, for example, nice. I don't know if you guys know, but nice, the word nice used to mean fool, a foolish person. It used to mean 
this guy is a fool. If you went back hundreds of years back and you said this, the gentleman is a nice man. People look at you like, what, what, what are you talking about? What, what? The man would, you might, might throw down the gauntlet, might challenge you to a duel. But now the word means a nice, a, you know, an affable person, someone who's not, is good, just a good thing. So the Greeks were not, um, were not immune to this. So maybe along the line, it came to mean people of a black or burnt, like ether came to mean burnt. And I can see potentially why that would be. Because you look at the universe on, you know, from their perspective in the nighttime, it looks like it's black, black, burnt, you know, um, I don't know, but you can definitely see how that could have changed over time. So this idea that it was, I need to find some papers. I believe there are some people, some academics out there who believe this theory um, of the origin of Ethiopians being more linked to this aspect. Um, but that's something to watch out for, guys. That's something that I've not heard anybody says. I've not meant... I've uh, <laughs> Meje Commander says, it still means that you bought me this 10K ring, baby, you're so nice. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So... That's potentially what's going on. Metatron, I doubt, has ever come across this. Uh, again, because he is he's the worst of the worst. He doesn't really do his homework, but he likes to use big words to sound like he knows what he's talking about. Anyway. Oh, and also, in addition, the ancient Greeks also use... They use the word ether... Uh, sorry, the word Ethiopian to refer to people living along the Nile. They'll use that word to refer to black people in Libya. Herodotus writes about a certain class of Libyans who are Ethiopians. It didn't mean people just um, south of Egypt. refers to the population south of Egypt, but in general, it's an indicator of a specific phenotypic type not a population. For example, to Pliny, the word Ethiopians indicates not only the populations living in the southern territories of the uh, Roman province of Egypt, so in Africa pro consularis, we are talking about the populations led by the famous Kandake Amanirenas in Nubia, or Kingdom of Meroe, but it also indicates the populations living in the All right, stop telling us what we already know. Let's sunburnt at the... Okay, so he's showing us a quote from... Quellemic has done this. He's done this all. He's showing us a quote. I'll tell you my take on this in a minute. And Quellemic has pointed out that this is a quote from the Roman era. By the time you get to the Roman era, um, Egypt, especially the bits that the Romans like to settle in, northern Egypt, the Delta, is very heavily settled with um, Greeks, Levantine types, and if you've got a mix of people living there. So much so that the complexion there, the average complexion is not as dark. But you're still getting Greeks depict Egyptians, native Egyptians, as we would recognize them as black today. This quote, the Ethiopians stay in the world and depict a race of men steeped in darkness. Less some sunburnt are the natives of India, the land of Egypt, flooded by the Nile, darkens bodies more mildly owing to the inundation of its fields. It is a country nearer to us and its moderate climate imparts a medium tone. But what's this medium tone? This is a Roman, Romanized Greek talking, Manilo Astronomica. Um, and he's talking about a range of colors here. And first of all, this guy's obviously not traveled. Yeah, he is afraid to bring Herodotus in. Mackenzie he is because he barely talks about Herodotus in this at all I don't think he mentions Herodotus at all well he does but only to say that uh, he was he was um he, you know this typical thing he couldn't have meant black black people um, but you're reading this quote and you're thinking okay they're less some uh, the natives of India are less sunburnt um and The Ethiopians are steeped in darkness. Indians are less sunburnt. Okay, fine. But 
where which of if you're looking at this on a table um let's say on a graph on a bell curve you're still looking at a range that's near the top so think of a bell curve and a graph you're looking at the top peak cut off the peak that makes a sort of semicircle a small little um semicircle that's the range you're looking at you're not looking at the bottom bit <laughs> you know you're looking at a range of black peoples and in that range this man is saying the people who inhabit egypt are more like the people who inhabit now what i believe he's saying is northern india because we also have um texts that compare southern indian people dravidians we all know what dravidians look like um they compare them they, some texts even say the Dra dravidian indians southern indians are blacker than ethiopians and we would guess why they say that because uh let's look at um let's look at dravidians quickly Oh, I think I even have it in a bookmark. Yes, I do. Dravidian Indians. Look at them. These are blue black people. These are black people. So you have some Roman texts. I think Amalianus Marcellinus. Amalianus Marcellinus talks about this, and he says that. Uh, I don't. Again, you, you, I don't want my stream to crash, so I'm not gonna bother my tabs put too much demand on my tabs you guys can i'm not making this stuff up you can go yourself and look up the sources i think it's amianus marcellinus who says who compares the dravidians to the ethiopians so some roman texts even that late on are talking about the southern indians being in line with the ethiopians in terms of their complexion so this guy that uh, Metatron has chosen to speak on is speaking really when he says the Indians, he's talking about Northern Indians. But let's look at the Northern Indian type that this, this um, Roman writer is speaking about. Let's look at people called the Brahmins. Let's look at ancient Brahmins, what they look like. Okay, let me just... Yeah. All right, here we go. There we go. There's a Quora article at it again. There's an old picture of Brahmin monks. Uh, these are North Indian caste of people. Um, let's go to... This image of them. It's a very diluted region, so you will get um, a dark range. But what I'm trying to show you here is that this isn't outside of the perambula. This uh, is that is that even a word? Uh, the it's not outside of the remit of an African color. So this man that he thinks um, he's citing to prove that they weren't black. They, this is another representation, an old presentation of the Brahmin of Northern Indians, the Brahmin caste. There's lots and lots of them. There's, um, here they are here. Um, I can't, I can't really, that's not a great image of them on the side there. Point is that these people fall within the ambit of what, if, 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 if Manilo in Astronomico is saying, the Ethiopians, the ones I'm talking about, the black ones, those Sudanese Ethiopians. Remember, we're not talking about Ethiopia, the country today. We're talking about South of, Af South of Africa, deeper down into Africa. And we're talking about real dark ones. Okay. Um, 
thank you parameter cushy that's the uh, yeah that's uh, there was some no there was another word i was looking for anyway um but that will do parameters good if we're talking about if we're talking about a range here this is black range uh, we started this four hours ago and i started this by showing you guys that this deep red that you can see on the walls can is easily represented in africa this deep brown sorry not red brown that you see is easily represented on africa or on the african continent you don't have to go and find white people or levantines and then tan them and say they were trying to represent themselves as tan no you can stay on africa and you can see that this is the skin tone of africans a lot of them in that region so this quote isn't the silver bullet that he thinks this guy that he's talking about even as far into even as far into the as as late in the day as roman era egypt this man is still depicting africans black africans but metatron thinks see it says that they are a medium tone yeah <laughs> like within the african context yes within the black african context anyway let's go natives of india the land of egypt flooded by the nile darkens bodies more mildly owing to the inundation of its fields it is a country nearer to us and its moderate climate in parts a medium tone let's continue from Arianus between the 1st and 2nd century. The appearance of the inhabitants is also not very different in India and Ethiopia. The southern Indians are rather more like Ethiopians as they are black to look on and their hair is black, only they are not so snub-nosed or hooly-haired as the Ethiopians. The northern Indians are most like the Egyptians, physically. Bear in mind that India, modern day India, has been greatly lightened by the incursions made by Ottoman Turks, the Islamic empires of successive Ottoman Turks, um, uh, Ottoman empires, um, and the Mughal empire, the Mongol Mughal empire, a lot of that. And then you also have the um, Aryan uh, Indus um uh, migration from the sort of the south east european step uh the steps there and so you've got that happening relatively recently all of that relatively recently all post roman um dominance when these guys are writing so when these guys are writing they're still writing about a class of indians markedly darker than what you see in northern india today metatron that's not an assertion metatron using his brain can easily fathom that he can easily see that we're not talking about <laughs> like aryan looking indians with like you know you, you've seen them you guys know them you, you know we're not talking about that level we're talking about indians whose skin tone is like cast that kind of copper hue that brown copper hue that a lot of africans have themselves especially a lot of africans in the horn of africa in the east and the northeast of africa even in west africa as i showed you at the beginning of this live unanimously i'm not done yes unanimously done from Strabo, in its geography, between the 1st century BC and the 1st century AD. As for the people of India, those in the south are like the Ethiopians in color, although they are like the rest in respect to countenance and hair, for on account of the humidity of the air, their hair does not curl, whereas those in the north are like the Egyptians. Next one. Philostratus, nicknamed the Athenian, writes... For when he arrived at the confines of Ethiopia and Egypt, and the name of the place is Sikaminus, 
he came across a quantity of uncoined gold and linen. It was a marketplace to which the Ethiopians bring all the products of their country, and the Egyptians, in their turn, take them all away and bring to the same spot their own wares of equal value. Now, the inhabitants of the marches, the marches being the bordering land between Egypt and Nubia, for context, are not yet fully black, but are half-breeds in matter of colour for they are partly not so black as the Ethiopians, yet partly more so than the Egyptians. So, according to an ancient Greek, the Egyptians are the light-skinned, the Ethiopians are the black-skinned, and these inhabitants of the marches are in between. Unanimously? I'm not done. This is another ancient Greek term often found in period sources to describe skin tone and it's one of the favourite of Afrocentric scholars. And it is used to assert the ancient Egyptians' philotypic type as being black. And for example, they use the words of Herodotus. In reality, anyone who even has the most basic experience in translation of the classics in ancient Greek will tell you that this term is fundamentally polysemic. And it can mean both a black skin or a darker skin as a result of tanning. So, when translating Herodotus, how do we know which one it is? This is when the discussion enters the domain of discourse analysis. Let's have a look at the passage used by Homer in the Odyssey where this specific term is used, so we can establish a pattern. Here is when Athena brings youth back to Ulysses. We read. At the beginning of this um, segment, he says genre will be important. Then why is Metatron, if that will, and, and, and discourse and all, you use all those big words, why is Metatron now chosen um, a myth, a myth with which to compare what we have in um, travel accounts? Why? He's about to quote you a myth where Odysseus is turned black. That doesn't make any sense. That's, that's, that's a mythical fairy tale. So, just because the word was used there, w <sighs> listen, guys. I've had fun. It's been brilliant. There's much more that could have been said, um, much more, but um, I'm tired. I really am tired. So, um, right now in the UK is three forty in the morning. I don't know how I'm gonna do it in the morning because I got a lot of work to 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 get on with and. Um, but I will survive. This is this is my um this stuff fires me up. So that's okay. Listen, guys, we couldn't get to the end of this. Uh I think enough has been done to show that um uh, you're not dealing with an honest individual. Um I would advise us to take everything that this people like this say with a pinch of salt. Um there will be videos in the coming days, uh, weeks, um, short ones, just not really referencing this rubbish directly, but just countermanding a few of the um, lies and untruths that you get um, in in the, you know, debunking uh, circles, um, you know, the, the anti-woke debunking circles, so, so to speak. So, there's much more coming, guys. There's much more coming from True Black. There's much more coming from me. I'm I'm knackered. I'm shattered. I hope I've made up. Let me know, guys. Press one. I hope I've made up for a pretty bad stream on Friday. And um, I hope you guys are pleased with what you've got today. Like I said, I could go on. There's a there's <sighs> this guy talks later on about um just want to show oh do you know what yeah um i can't i can't be bothered you uh, let me tell you this let me let me just end on this note right if you're still with me um we don't need to convince them anymore i i've been on a long journey i used to feel very annoyed that you'd get people like this still out there but we're dealing with hundreds of years of deliberate misinformation and even black people believe that misinformation. So how much more people like this? Um, some of them will come round. Some of them won't. Some some people, black, white, 
wherever you're from, will come around and see that, oh my goodness, history has been robbed of a people and that is the, one of the worst things you can do to someone to rob them of their story to rob them of their truth to rob them of their history some people will come around and see how evil that is and will think you know will join join this cause so to speak and say you know this is wrong guys let's give ancient egypt back to who it belongs to and stop calling them thieves some people won't but it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter as long as we know what's what we teach that to our children we teach that to the brothers we teach that to the sisters and that's it. We move. We carry on like that. People are out there doing this. You know, uh, Kushi says it's a mind game, and it is. Kushi's always saying that, and it is. It's true. It's true. It is a mind game, you know. Um, as long as we know what's what, and we're putting it out there unashamedly, um, history will, re, um, will, you know, turn back to the right course, and, you know, the truth is the truth. It doesn't really matter. Um, what these people say so anyway i'm gonna end again um i think it's worth ending there uh where is it there we go i've got it right there it's ezekiel 29 14 let's end on that i love this i will bring them back oh come on i will bring them back from the captivity and return them to Upper Egypt, the land of their ancestry. The rest of it is pretty dark, pretty grim. And maybe that's what's going on. Maybe that's why I like to believe it is. I like to believe it is. I think it is. I think Egypt, uh, I, I will say this, it will be a negative note, but I think we're a proud people. We are a proud people, and I think Egypt got proud. Egypt got too proud. I know a lot of people in the chat might not agree with me, but... Egyptians got proud and the Lord God of Israel said, that's enough for that I will bring you low and you will never be the nation that you once were. Um, and that's what happened, you know. Uh, but that don't matter. That don't matter. We can learn from that. We can learn from that. We can be, I think black folk can be some of the biggest talkers, some of the, some of the biggest chess beaters in the room anywhere, anywhere. And I think as a people, we need to be careful of that because we are not greater than the Most High, you know? And his name is Jah, his name is Jesus. So I'm going to leave it there. Didn't want to, I didn't mean to get off into a sermon, but <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's my belief. I don't believe in all this, all oh, the ancestors and all of that. Say what you want. That's my belief. Um, but anyway, that's what, when it comes down to it, even a, even a fair, quote unquote fairy tale book proves our point. The land of their ancestry, Upper Egypt. All right, guys. Good night, and I am. Um, I've been I've been blessed, massively blessed, just to be in your company tonight. And um, I'm so glad you all turned up. I'm gonna end the stream now, and I say once again, thank you all. Thank you, Kushi. Thank you, Major Commander. Um, thank you. Banana Palm, thank you um, for our super chat, um, and I'm so glad for you all. All right, blessings, peace, I'm about to end the stream now.